Hello everyone, today a very interesting video awaits you, I would like to ask you to support this video by liking and subscribing to the channel, enjoy watching everyone. The small mountain settlement was located among bizarre rocks, with a dense forest growing close to it. One night at the moment of the full moon, when people were quietly resting, something unusual happened. At midnight there was a terrible howl of a monster that came from the forest. The whole village woke up, the men went out into the street, lighting their way with torches. Everyone was scared by the black monster with red eyes. Suddenly a meteorite appeared in the sky, it was approaching the earth with great speed. It was a huge fireball. All the men looked at the sky. Some of them shouted what a miracle this was. A sphere of fire hit the ground right where the monster was. An explosion occurred and the ground around it caught fire. The monster was lifted by the blast wave and thrown to the side. He was scared and ran into the forest. When the fire subsided at the place where the explosion was, all the people saw a naked young man with long black hair. He covered his male organs with his hands. The villagers thanked God for their salvation. All the men who were there were surprised by the appearance of the young man. The guy himself was no less surprised by what was happening than they were. He thought, what kind of strange people are there, some strange place to be. The young man saw poor villagers in bad clothes, which meant backward technology. He thought that the first appearance after the transition was not the best, but the flight was pleasant. The boy looked at everything around him and thought that now he was not at all ashamed, although he was naked, but they should be ashamed, since they looked very poor, unhappy, and backward. Our hero told the men that he was fine and his appearance was part of the performance. He was still without clothes, covering his nakedness with his hands. After some time, the hospitable hosts gave him shelter and clothing. The men drank sake, clinking glasses and praising the hero. People drank to the health of the young man who today saved them from the black monster. The boy also sat among them with a cup of sake. He was still wondering how he got here. All signs pointed to him having made the transition. In his previous life, his name was Su Tsinyo. The guy was a student with a high IQ, a young genius in the development of artificial intelligence. You can call him a nugget, since no one invested money in him, he just had talent. To prove himself, the young man did research day and night, wrote programs and hoped that he would make a breakthrough. He forgot to eat and even drink water. However, on the eve of success, the student suddenly died from overwork. This happened while he was studying at night, lying on the keyboard. Then there was some kind of flight and explosion that did not cause him any harm, and the boy ended up in the village. His landing scared off the monster, but the residents realized that God had sent a hero to help them. After dinner, the young man left the living room, not knowing what to do next. He wanted to be left alone to think about what happened quietly. Suddenly the boy heard someone's voice inviting the guest to rest, because the victory over the monster had tired him and now the safety of the village depended only on him. Still, in these few minutes, when the guy was left alone, after a little analysis of the situation, two ways out of the situation were revealed to him. The first is to pretend to be a hero, fight a monster and fake death from a poisonous bite. The second option is to find a local gang here and pretend that he was beaten to death. The young man thought that these were two risky options. To avoid trouble, he needed to escape from the village before people discovered his identity. The young guy went into the bedroom, lay down on the bed, without undressing or even taking off his shoes. He thought that he still wanted to properly, at least for a few days, enjoy the privileges of a hero. When he spread his arms on the bed, he felt a body with his right hand, it was a girl, or rather her chest. He jumped out of bed as if scalded, shouting what kind of joke this was. There lay a girl with long dark hair, she was undressed, but covered with a blanket. She said that the guy is the hope of the whole village and wants to serve him all night if he wants it. The young man looked at the girl. 
He didn't expect that the village was so passionate about heroes, so the feudal society had a lot to learn. The guy calmly walked up and extended his hand to her shoulder. He put his hand on her shoulder and told her to give him time to wash. After these words, the guy opened the door, turned around again and looked at the girl. Already at the door, he told her to wait for him for a couple of minutes. As soon as he closed the door, three young men stood on one knee in front of him. They greeted him and told him to wait for them. The young man joked that this was a support group. An elder was with the three young men, he said that they were afraid that no difficulties would arise. The elderly man shouted at the guys that they had something to learn from the guest. Then the elder said that they don't dare detain him now and let him go to rest. He gestured towards the room from which the young man had left. Our hero cheerfully told everyone to leave and was surprised by the elder's assumption of what problems he might have. The hero motioned for everyone to leave, the elder left after everyone else. When the young man returned to the bedroom, there was only a blanket on the bed, the girl was not there. The guy thought that taking a bath before making love was not such a good habit. In the middle of the room there was a round table and a chair. The boy came up and sat down at the table on which a candle was burning. He raised his hands to the fire and noticed a ring on his hand. The young man wondered where he got it from. The ring had a large green stone. The young man decided to take it off to take a closer look. Our hero brought it closer to his eyes and looked inside the stone, there was something there. He thought that this ring was the only thing he had on when he was reborn, but it was not from his previous life. Inside the ring was a jade pendant. It glowed with a beautiful green sheen and played in the candlelight. As a student with a high intelligence and a comic book lover, he knew that in order to activate such things, a drop of blood was needed. So he bit his finger and got a much-needed drop of blood. A drop of scarlet blood from his finger fell on the pendant, which the guy took out of the ring. It flowed down the jade pendant. The young man wondered why nothing was happening, maybe it was because there was too little blood, or it just didn't work that way. Then the boy injured all his fingers, and blood sprayed out of them in a stream. He was in so much pain that a tear fell from his eye. Suddenly the jade pendant was activated, it turns out that the stone was opened not by blood, but by tears. The young man found himself on the surface of the lake, the water was calm. The sky was almost the same color as the water, it was reflected in the water. The view was very beautiful, but the shores of the lake were not visible. The guy, as a computer genius, was not surprised by the virtual space, but was it really safe? He thought that nothing would surprise him anymore, but it was a breathtaking sight. Our hero turned around, as if sensing the approach of a miracle. It was a beautiful girl who walked on the surface of the water. She had a light green aura around her and her clothes were light. The guy had a lot of questions about who she was, what her name was, how old she was and what her zodiac sign was. He also wanted to know what she thought about him. The guy said his name is Su Tsinyo and he is not married. But all these questions remained unanswered, because something happened, and suddenly the water, which until then had kept him on its surface, parted. The waves rose and the wind swirled around. The young man found himself underwater, moreover, he began to drown, descending more and more into the depths. He couldn't breathe, there wasn't enough oxygen, he covered his mouth with his hand. Suddenly the young man saw a beautiful stranger who followed him into the depths. She came closer and closer, although together they plunged into the depths of the sea, further and further from the surface of the water. When the beauty came very close, she kissed him to give him oxygen, and then whispered in the guy's ear something about the contract of the soul, life and death. Together, Su Tsinyo and the stranger swirled in a kiss in the water. She also said that after concluding the contract, he would never betray her. All reality took on a reddish tint. The sky and water turned the color of sunset. The contract of souls was signed, and the young man could now be free. 
The guy stood and watched as the stranger turned away from him and wanted to leave. He said that somehow they quickly concluded this contract. The young man suggested repeating it. But the girl turned around and said that after signing the contract, the next stage is its completion. After a moment, she added that according to the contract, he must find what she needs. The beauty said that it was time to find out what she needed. The boy sat down on the sand. The girl stood nearby and told him to help her restore her memory. The guy, who has a high level of intelligence, began to be clever and said that they had just discussed the obligations of the parties, and she was violating contract law by demanding the impossible. The girl was completely at a loss from these clever speeches. Her face became sad and she asked what contract law was. The young man realized that he was too demanding of the stranger. The guy noticed how worried she was. He decided to start by asking a simple question, what is her name? Her eyes sparkled and it seemed that in just a moment the beauty would burst into tears. The girl said she couldn't remember her name. Then the boy said, if she doesn't remember, then he will choose her name himself. The stranger agreed. She stood nearby, and the young man kept thinking about what a worthy name should be for such a beauty who looks like a fairy and is pure as ice. The young man thought that this name should combine romance, poetry and deep meaning. The boy closed his eyes and said that he decided to call her Dunmay. The girl said that she would be fine now, Dunmay, like a winter plum flower, lonely in the snow. She was so light and airy and stood on the surface of the water, which had the pink hue of the sunset. Suddenly everything disappeared, the guy opened his eyes, he was in the bedroom on the floor near the table. He said the woman's name, Dunmay, twice, but no one responded to him. The young man rubbed his eyes and realized that it was just a dream that he had. He looked around again. Suddenly our hero saw a book with a jade pendant on top. The young man thought where this book came from, because he had not seen it before. Its name was, Star Martial Art Technique. When the young man opened the book, there was an inscription on its first page. It stated that according to their contract, the girl would help practice this technique. It was signed, Dunmay. The guy was glad that after all, the meeting with the girl was a reality. Our hero began to leaf through the book and look at the drawings. Martial art techniques were depicted there. All the necessary stages for cultivation were described there, hardening the body, strengthening bones, flesh and tendons. There was also information about human spiritual energy and the rebirth of the soul. At this time, in one of the houses of the village, a conversation between two men was heard in the dead of night. The first man asked Brother Chow if he was sure about the village chief election. The second one said that if only he had someone who could help, he would definitely become a headman. The men sat at the table and drank tea from white cups. The first man was astute and asked if he meant the hero Su Tsinyo, gaining such support would certainly not be a bad thing. The morning came on the third day after our hero met the stranger. All this time he was in a small house that stood on the edge of the village. The snowy peak of the mountain towered high above the village. These three days were not in vain. The young man spent all this time in intense training, he practiced stellar technique. This technique contains a large amount of spiritual and star essence that can be absorbed to become a full-fledged immortal practitioner. Not only the body, but also the face will be transformed. The young man from time to time took a mirror and peered at his facial features. With practice, the face should have become more attractive. But so far no changes have been visible. The boy was upset because there were no changes on his face. The young man thought that maybe he had been deceived or that he needed to work harder. The guy put a jade pendant on a black cord around his neck and immediately Dunmay appeared. She entered the room, and everything was illuminated with heavenly light. Su Tsinyo looked at the girl and thought that only a few days had passed, but the sister seemed to have become even more beautiful. The girl came very close to the young man and took his cheeks with her hands. 
he looked at her without taking his eyes off. She joked that he was drooling. The boy replied that he was just hungry and asked why she appeared. Dunmay said that she suddenly felt a special aura. The beauty said that she felt that somewhere nearby there was a treasure that exuded this aura. The girl thought, trying to remember the past, it seemed to her that it was connected with her memory. The girl suggested that we need to come closer to understand everything. The boy said that the village is not big, and he can explore everything at night. The beauty said that she was glad, because she was not mistaken about him. She looked at the young man carefully and disappeared as quickly as she appeared. The sun rose very high and it became very hot. The young man felt very stuffy. He thought about how he could cool down. The boy was in the room, he looked around and saw logs of firewood. He thought that fans and air conditioners had not yet been invented here, so he needed to come up with something simple that would help cool down. The young man took firewood and made thin canes from the logs, then found paper and nails. He made himself a device for convenience with his own hands. The young man thought that a person is the architect of his own happiness and comfort. He made a fan, on which he then made a beautiful design of flowers and herbs. Then he decided to make a few more. The boy was pleased with himself, it turned out not bad at all like for the first time. The most important thing is that it provided coolness and comfort. Suddenly he heard someone calling him outside. Su Tsinyo opened the door and saw many gifts in front of the entrance, including medicinal herbs, large mushrooms, eggs in a basket, sweets and other food. Two men stood near the gifts. The young man asked in surprise what this all meant. One of the men immediately ran up to the young man and told him to help him become the head of the village. The old man began to bow and lament. The second man also ran up to the guy and said that he came first, so the hero should help him become the head of the settlement. At the same time, he elbowed another person, and he fell. The two elderly men exchanged angry glances and muttered something under their breath. Suddenly one of them, who was older, said that he had ginseng root for the hero, he held about a dozen of them in his hands. Another man, who was overweight, bowed to the hero and said that he had brought precious stones as a gift. They were simply huge, beautiful gems and there were a lot of them. The young man was very surprised by the gifts, among which were such expensive gifts. He was especially interested in the two eggs in the basket. He thought that he could not take them with him, but for now he would leave them here. The young man thought about it, he wanted to keep all the gifts, but how can he help men who want the same thing, to win the elections and become the headman of this village? Our hero scratched the back of his head with his hand and said that he should think about this at least for the night. The elderly people told him to think it over carefully, they bowed one last time and wanted to leave. Suddenly a good idea flashed into the hero's head. The boy thought that he was not used to just taking gifts, if he gave them a fan he made, it would be a trifle, but maybe a pleasant one. The young man gave each of them a fan. The old people were surprised by such a gesture on the part of the hero, he responded with a gift for a gift. They looked at the fans and wondered how he made them with his own hands. The fan shone when it was opened, the men did not at all consider that such a gift was a trifle. The older man said that such a fan was worthy of heaven, and nothing like it could be found on earth. Another man experienced when he discovered his tender trembling and the feeling of his lost youth, when he ran at sunset along the seashore, towards his first love. Both old men were pleased with the gift. For some time they even forgot why they came here. The young man thought that although before they had openly sucked up, now they were sincere. Our hero realized that the spiritual essence emanating from him was transferred to the fan, which ceased to be an ordinary object, but acquired a piece of magic. The guy still thought ahead, he returned his thoughts to his past. He thought that the spiritual entity would become the source of his scientific knowledge and skills and increase his intelligence. The young man dreamed of creating a spiritual machine, an airplane and even a spiritual spaceship. 
All this will become a reality if he receives a lot of spiritual power for a new era of scientific cultivation. The older old man returned and interrupted the hero's dreams, he asked what the name of this treasure was, pointing to the fan. The boy said that it doesn't bother him now. Su Tsinyo still snapped his fingers and said that let it be, your most ordinary fan. He said this phrase with such a smart look that the old man didn't even think that the name was a little long. The elderly man opened the fan, and it illuminated everything around with its radiance. The hero realized that the elder appreciated his work too highly. Then the old man fell to his knees next to the young man, hugged his leg and began to say that the hero wanted to refuse him by giving away such a precious thing. Then the second old man came running, who was watching them. He fell to his knees, crawled over and grabbed the boy's other leg, begging for his favor and wanting to bestow even greater gifts on him. Su Tsinyo began to get tense about this scene, he told the old people that everything was fine and they could return home, but he would think about it for now. The guy thought that the poor fellows wanted the same thing from him. After some time, when night shrouded the mountains, the young man and girl stood on a large plateau, beyond which there was a cliff. She said that the aura comes from the mountain opposite them, but how to get there? The guy said that he was prepared, but she shouldn't worry. The boy made something similar to a pinwheel with wooden blades, which he attached to himself. This was the hero's new creation, a sparkling ring, a helicopter powered by spiritual energy. He ran and jumped into the abyss. Mentally the boy told the creation to work and the blades to spin. So the girl and the boy flew over a deep cliff. She floated like a fairy, her hair and clothes fluttering in the wind. He flew with the help of his device, the blades of which were spinning quickly. Su Tsinyo was a technical genius, that's why he created this thing. But over time, he saw that it was decreasing, probably the device did not have enough power. The blades are jammed. The girl suggested that he needed to practice, since he lacked spiritual strength. He said why didn't she say this before? It's good that this happened when they were already close to the ground. This land was called Forbidden. The girl told the guy that she felt exactly this aura emanating from this place. The guy said what a restricted area it is if there are no guards here. He saw a sign and joked that perhaps the sign should scare him. Suddenly, after walking two more steps, he came into range of the field guarding the entrance. He shouted that it was a detection mechanism. The blue field activated, something like the energy field of the wall. The figure of a guard with a battle axe and in armor, suddenly appearing out of nowhere, had a blue glow. She had energy power and blocked the path to the cave. Suddenly the warrior moved and immediately struck the guest without warning. The young man managed to jump away. He saw how powerful the blow of the axe was on the ground in the place where he had recently been. The mythical figure of the guard spoke. The warrior said that those who do not have a seal are prohibited from entering the cave. The young man asked what kind of seal this was. Suddenly, a man with a torch in his hand walked towards him from the darkness. He said that the seal of the village chief is needed here. The stranger turned out to be a local resident, his name was John San. He recognized the young man and greeted the hero, who had previously saved the entire village from a black monster. The villager said that only the village chief is allowed to enter this forbidden place because only he has the seal. The boy immediately remembered two elderly people who came to him yesterday and tearfully asked him to help them become the headman of the village. No wonder those two wanted to be the prefect. The young man suggested to Jean San that it was time to change the headman of their village. The guy suggested that if he became the headman, he would be able to enter the forbidden zone. But the local resident shook his head. The village guy said that if he is young, handsome and considered a hero, this does not mean that everything is allowed to him. The peasant said that in order to become a headman, 500 signatures are needed. As soon as the guys moved away from the entrance to the cave, the figure of the guard immediately disappeared. Our hero took Jean San by the shoulder, 
and together they went to the village. Su Tsinyo thanked the guy for the useful information. The hero definitely decided that he should become the headman of this village. This post was very important for him, so he could help the beautiful Dunmei girl, who appears and disappears whenever she wants. On the way home, two young men walked through the edge of the forest, where they saw men sitting in a circle. They all repeated the same phrase, God of the Forbidden Land, restore my light. Our hero approached the people sitting on the luminous circle in the lotus position. They all had their eyes closed and said something like a prayer. He asked them what they were doing. One of the people, who was bald, without opening his eyes, said that they were residents of the village of Guanmin, in which, for unknown reasons, a hundred people go blind every night. The man said that this is why people gather in the mountains every night and pray that the divine power of the forbidden land will help them regain their light. Then our hero remembered that if people don't see anything at night, isn't it night blindness? He wondered how to really help these people. The guy told himself that simple superstition would not help them in any way, science was needed here. These methods can be effective. After all, if the young man helped them, he would do them a great service and do a good deed. And if later he wants to be a headman, then many people will vote for him out of gratitude. Su Tsinyo had something in mind. He left the clearing in the mountains and quickly ran down. He thought he would do what he set out to do and get the seal. The guy returned to the village, to his small house and sat down at the table. He took paper and brushes and began to draw. It was something like a scheme. Then, as always, unexpectedly, and when she herself wanted it, a girl appeared. Like a fairy, she flew to him and asked what he was drawing, since she did not understand anything at all about the drawings. Somehow, unusually, our hero began to feel bad, this happened at night. Now his right hand did not obey him and did not want to draw. He clasped his right hand with his left hand. The guy remembered that he felt trembling and tired several times a night. The body does not listen to him, then everything goes away. He told the girl about this. Dunmei suggested maybe it was because of her. For some reason she was so happy about this, although our hero was puzzled by these changes in his body. It is most likely that after a contract was concluded between souls and their bodies, they began to be in a symbiotic relationship. His essence not only supported her, but also nourished her. The couple was close mentally, but their bodies were intertwined and touched one another when she was near him. Our hero thought that the more attractive a girl looks, the more dangerous she is. But why did it act in such a way that his energy decreased? He asked Dunmei why it only works one way. She said that he is the owner and must feed her. The guy thought that he had entered into an unequal agreement that was not fair, why did he sign it? The guy thought it was true what they say, sometimes love kills. The beauty said that she knew only one method that would help him in this situation. This is more practice on the technique she gave him. The boy realized that it would not be easy for him. Our hero realized that there was nothing more to wait for. He sat in the lotus position and began to concentrate on the star cultivation technique, a true treasure indeed. He trained all night long and received not only replenishment of strength, but also a large amount of spiritual energy. He also thought that in order to continue communicating with Dunmei, he needed to have the highest level. The young man looked at the sleeping fairy and thought that sooner or later, her essence would completely drain him, so he needed to train. He walked up to the table, remembering that he needed to take the post of headman. The young man continued to create and created a tool that made working in the field easier. It was a mechanical thing. You can try it in the garden, among the beds of vegetables and melons. The girl asked him, appearing out of nowhere, what it was. The young man said that this is a spiritual harvester, his second creation, and working with it in the field is a mere trifle. It handles carrots with ease. The young man was a technology fan. He thought that if you can solve a problem using technology, then you should use it. 
The girl joked unsuccessfully that he was a rabbit, why did he need so many carrots? He was surprised at her imperfection in the field of thinking. Of course, only he could have come up with such an idea. The boy said with a smart look, raising his index finger up, that the most important thing for treating night blindness is vitamin A, which is abundant in carrots. The young man threw root vegetables into a large wooden barrel and washed them. He said that mixing this vitamin with spiritual energy will give excellent results. The young man carried out several purifications of the resulting medicine and received what he wanted in the form of a round pill that glowed from the inside with some kind of light glow. He made a lot of these pills so that there would be enough for all the villagers. The boy threw the bag of medicine over his shoulders and ran to Guanmin village. At this time, the voice of a man was heard in the main square of the village, who said that only light awaited the residents ahead. Many people came to listen to his advice. On a wooden stage decorated with lanterns, a man spoke who wants to take the post of headman. He encouraged everyone to go up to the mountains and hunt the demon pig, eat its liver and gain sight. People said that for many years, no one had seen the demon pig. The man on stage said that he found traces of the monster yesterday and would tell him exactly where. People shouted that if this was true and led to recovery, then they would support his candidacy for village headman. The speaker stood with his hands on his hips and said that he was Zhao Xuanchen and was declaring to all of them that hunting the demon would cure them all. He spoke about this so confidently that the residents believed him. All the people shouted joyfully that they would kill the pig. The man smiled, but thought to himself how easy it was to deceive these naive fools. Immediately, a dozen daredevils, together with Zhao Xuanchen, went to the mountains. The leader led them to the place where he allegedly saw the traces of a pig demon. They walked along a path near a mountain cliff. The man walked ahead and thought that when his assistant Zhao Si made a fuss at the place where they agreed, he would go there alone and pretend that he was injured when he tried to catch the pig. The old man was pleased with himself because he thought that his plan would work and he would become a prefect. He believed that the people of Guanming would be grateful to him for saving them. But when Zhao Xuanchen reached the appointed place, he looked around, he did not hear any noise there. He thought maybe Zhao Si's accomplice had fallen asleep. When suddenly his assistant rushed straight towards the people, shouting that a demon pig was running behind him. The young man looked scared and ran very fast. Zhao Xuanchen realized what was happening, something unusual and not at all what they had agreed on with Zhao Si's assistant. The young man ran up to them and told everyone to run away, because the demon pig was here. The hunters raised their weapons and shouted that the boss had not lied to them and the demon was running here. Now the men said that everything depended on him, a brave gentleman who would fight the demon and win. The man told all the hunters that he was grateful that there really was a beast nearby, such a chance comes once in a lifetime, to show everyone his courage. The gentleman raised his weapon up, it was a small scythe, and said that everyone should stand here, and he would go alone and kill the demon. Suddenly there was a loud noise of hooves on the ground, and all the people saw a menacing black demon with red eyes and large fangs, rushing straight at the people. The gentleman's face twisted into an expression of horror. He shouted that there really was an immortal realm-level demon pig here. The old man grabbed his heart with his hand. But the appearance of the black monster was so threatening that in a moment, Zhao Xuanchen ran away, his heels flashing, faster than the young guys. Just our hero stood at the top of the hill and saw how a demon pig with her brood, small cubs, scattered the people who came to hunt him. The young man thought that it was better to get out of here quickly, away from this formidable beast. On his shoulder was a bag of pills. He said there were so many creatures here that they could trample him. Suddenly he stumbled on the wet ground and his foot slid down. The soil on the hill was wet and clayey. He began to slide down, and no matter how hard he tried, he could not slow down with his feet. A moment later, our hero was already standing in front of the pig demon literally a few meters away. All the hunters who did not have time to escape saw this. 
people started shouting that a hero had come to save them. But Su Tsinyo had only thoughts of quickly escaping. He blamed himself for not being careful. He mentally asked his Dunmei, or he would have time to escape from the monster that had the level of the immortal realm. The girl mentally told him that the guy would not have time to escape, since the level of the pig demon was higher than his. Despite the power of the pendant that he has, he cannot overcome the creature. The young man went through his options. He wondered how such a large group of these creatures had appeared here in broad daylight. The black huge creature seemed to freeze, it looked carefully at the guy who suddenly appeared in front of him. The young man noticed the pig had yellow eyes, cloudy pupils, red and swollen limbs, and black teeth. The guy established that it was a disease in which the animal is sensitive to sound. The guy remembered the fan and his spiritual harvester. He had a very bold idea. But is there enough time to implement it? All the hunters kept shouting for the hero to be careful and save them from the pig demon. They warned the young man that the beast was about to attack him. The black demon was three meters from the guy. His eyes sparkled evilly, his fangs were enormous, his mouth was open, he was breathing heavily. Local residents began to worry, since the young man seemed so small compared to the huge beast that he could easily trample him. Our hero used the only method he could think of in this situation, he began to exude spirituality by emitting high vibrations with his mouth and voice. These waves reached the beast, creating a strong impulse in its head, which the creature could not withstand. The pig demon's eyes closed and he staggered. Blood gushed from the animal's mouth. The animal fell on its back upside down and died. The impact of his body on the ground was like an explosion and raised a lot of dust and stones into the air. The young man couldn't believe his eyes. All the other animals became very scared, because their boss was stronger than them, but he was defeated, they were in danger, and they soon ran away. All the hunters fell to their knees in front of the young man and glorified the hero. The young man, the conqueror of the demon, was modest. He told them to get up from their knees and not worry. Residents thanked him for saving them. The boy joked to himself, after all, these are just a couple of pigs. When the hunters lit a fire and roasted the animal's carcass, they thought that one demon would not be enough for an entire village to be cured of blindness. Then our hero said that he had prepared a medicine for them that should cure them of this illness. He took his bag and untied it. It was just getting dark, so the boy handed out pills to all the men and told them to take them. The medicine worked instantly. The peasants rubbed their eyes, not believing that they could see well at night. All the people again rushed to thank our hero, he said that there was no need for thanks, but he had one request, that they sign and support him in the election of the headman. Local residents promised that they would definitely support his candidacy, because he protected them from monsters and demons, and they would be happy with him. And Zhao Xuanchen ran away and betrayed them, how can you trust him? The boy was glad that his plan worked, although there were some unforeseen moments in it. But thanks to this, he already has the support of 100 residents. The young man had to come up with something next. Among the people, he noticed Master Lin, the boy decided to attract him to his side and gave him his fan. But in return he wanted to get advice from the master. The gift really impressed the master. He gasped when he opened it. The young master thanked the hero and decided to help him with advice. Lin pointed out that there is a great opportunity, because in addition to the 100 residents living off fishing and hunting, there are also the remaining 400 residents experiencing serious food problems. If the hero can solve this problem, then other people will happily support him in the elections. Our hero asked who he could contact. The master said to Uncle Kunu, who is the head of the household. The two young men headed to the barn, where their uncle was almost always present. When they approached they heard a conversation between the clerk and Uncle Kunu. The latter said that the clerk was very cruel. Inside the large barn stood a clerk with a guard of two warriors. 
Opposite him stood his uncle and several peasants. The barnkeeper said that the price was rising and rising, and the poor people had nothing to live on. The clerk was unperturbed, he knitted his eyebrows and replied that if everything is so expensive for local residents, then let them go and buy food in the city. The old man had white hair and beard, but his body was slender. He objected to the clerk that the city was far from them, since the price had doubled, the boss was condemning families to starvation, and they could die. The clerk showed that he was already in a hurry. He said that the residents should decide if they want to buy something, otherwise the convoy will already leave. One of the people standing near Kunu's uncle told him that the entire harvest had been eaten by worms and soon they would have no food left at all. Another man said there was only enough food last time for a couple of days. The old man knew that merchants came once a month and if he did not buy, then everyone would remain hungry. Then the uncle said that they were buying grain. The clerk extended his hand to conclude the deal. When suddenly the footsteps of our hero and Master Lin were heard. He stood in front of everyone, opposite the clerk, and told his uncle not to buy grain, but he had another way to help the peasants. Our hero shouted to the clerk that he was a huckster, a man with a rotten heart and added that he should get out of here and never come back. The clerk Sazu's face changed, his lucrative deal had just fallen through. The man shouted at the young man, who was he to be in charge here? The boss began to scare that the village would be hungry, and next time the price would be even higher. But Master Lin, who stood next to Uncle Kunu, said to him, didn't he hear what the great hero said? When the clerk left, the master put his hand on the old man's shoulder and told him not to worry, since the hero would have a solution to this problem. The young people, one after another, began to calm the elderly man down. After all, they knew that the hero saved them from the demon and cured their common ailment of the locals, blindness. Su Tsinyo said that he heard everything and did not need praise. He warned the villagers that he needed five days to make sure they had food. But everyone was counting on the magic to happen immediately. People were surprised that the hero needed five days. At this time, three people were hiding behind the doors of the barn, the clerk and two old men. These were the old people who wanted to take the post of village elder and came to the hero with gifts. They all overheard the conversation in the barn and came up with a plan together, to deprive the village of food. In the barn, old man Kunu was afraid whether five days would be enough for the hero to do what he had in mind, because nothing grows so quickly, the land needs to be cultivated for a long time for this. Our hero said that he has a plan, but to carry it out he needs to find more farm tools and cattle. The uncle immediately became sad and said that they did not have enough money to pay for tools and livestock. Another person said that all of this is under the control of Zhao Xuanchen or Li Ainai. The boy remembered these old people who came to him with gifts. He told the sad residents not to worry, they would definitely plow the land on time and he would take care of it. After some time, our hero decided to visit Zhao Xuanchen at his house. This was one elderly man out of the two who wished to be a headman. When he entered the room, two people were sitting at the table, the owner and his guest, the second contender for the post of village headman. The owner asked what brought the young man to his house. Our hero honestly admitted that Uncle Kunu and his family were starving, and he wanted to ask them to borrow tools and cattle for two days to cultivate the land to grow crops on it. Zhao Xuanchen shouted that the young man was daydreaming. The owner of the house knew that our hero had also decided to become the village chief, so the owner of the house was not going to help his competitor. His other interlocutor, Fatli Ainai, who was sitting next to him at the table, said that he was also not ready to help him, especially since there were guarantees for the return of all the borrowed property. The young man thought how quickly these people who hated each other sang together. After all, they were sworn enemies only two days ago, which means they had a common interest. The young man told them about this. Zhao Xuanchen joked unsuccessfully and told the boy that what was his business, even though they slept in the same bed. Another man, Fatli Ainai, 
looked closely at the owner and thought badly about his inclinations. But the owner was in earnest. Then the young man thought that something was wrong here, since the owner wanted him to leave his house quickly. The young man closed his eyes for a moment and put his hand to his temple, he thought. Then everything came together in his head, and the young man screamed, pointing his index finger at the two men. He said that he understood everything and that vile merchant was at the same time with them. The owner jumped up and pointed the guy to the door. He shouted that Su Tsinyo should not dare to slander them. But the young man came closer to the table and said that he had evidence of their conspiracy. Our hero saw that tea was prepared for three people. Drops of tea remained on the table, but the cup was taken away. On the carpet near the empty chair there were shoe marks that he had seen the merchant have. He told the owner and his interlocutor about these facts. Zhao Xuanchen didn't have anything to say in his defense, he just denied it and said that the guy was wrong, but his face became sweaty and scared. The young man had nothing more to say to them, he turned around and walked towards the exit. He thought that they had already heard rumors that he wanted to become the village chief. When the men were left alone, the fat man decided to calm the owner and stroked his hand, but received only a scream in return. The men stayed to discuss their further plan. Work is in full swing under a large summer canopy, and smoke is coming from the stove. There are sounds like those in a forge. This is our hero working hard, smelting steel tools for cultivating the land. He held the heated metal with tongs and forged a plow. In a hot oven, steel melts in molds. Uncle Kunu, the head of the village's household affairs, came to see how the young man was doing. He asked the hero what he was doing. The guy said that two people, Zhao Xuanchen and Li Aine, refused to help, so he decided to do it himself. The young man explained that he wanted to replace the plow with a compound one, which would improve soil cultivation. In addition, he now uses steel rather than cast iron. The old man said that it was difficult for him to understand what the young man was up to, but he believed in him. Then other people approached the forge, they all surrounded the young man and looked at him in surprise. One ahead of the other, they praised his inventions and said that he was a skilled blacksmith, better than the royal one. The young peasant asked the hero, pointing to the plow, what this thing was. Su Tsinyo replied, holding a heavy steel plow in his hands, that tomorrow he would teach them how to use it. Then the young man started working on the robot again and worked until late. When early morning came, all the peasants came to help the guy. They saw a buffalo pulling a log on which eight plows were attached. The driver controlled the animal. Everyone wondered whether an ox could plow a field in one go. Imagine their joy when they saw that the buffalo had easily made eight even furrows, and part of the field was already cultivated. At this moment, Zhao Xuanchen and Li Ainei, together with the merchant, were just walking in those places. They talked about the fact that the deal would still take place and the villagers would have to buy grain from the merchant. Suddenly all three froze in amazement. There was an expression of surprise and anger on their faces. Zhao Xuanchen was the first to ask what was going on here. There were only two drivers with two oxen working in the field, but the huge field was already almost plowed. The animals were pulling some kind of large device behind them. All three men moved even closer to the field to see what the ox was pulling. They immediately realized that this was the work of the young hero Su Tsinyo, whom they had underestimated. The most evil and treacherous among them was the clerk. He told them not to worry, even if the farmers grew a good crop, he could destroy it in the blink of an eye. The merchant took out a glass jar from his bosom and showed it to his two interlocutors. He said he used the message talisman and got the good stuff. The clerk brought the glass jar closer to the men's faces, and they examined inside it some kind of insect that had a tail, many legs and a large mouth. At this time, our hero decided to think and plan what he should do next in order to increase productivity. He thought that he would need a lot of spiritual energy and went to the mountainside. 
There the young man sat down under the crown of a tree in the lotus position and began training. He went into deep analysis of everything that had happened and then decided to train. The young man couldn't understand why he was cultivating so hard, but he still had little spiritual energy. He felt that the cultivation method was not suitable for this environment. So the young man went to the waterfall and decided to try the waterfall cultivation method. He sat down on a rock, in the place where water falls down from a great height, and began training. Suddenly the Dunmei girl visited him in this place. She asked what he was doing. He replied that he was looking for a shortcut to cultivation that would bring more spiritual energy. The beauty said that there is no shortcut and that the base of this process is simply too small. But suddenly the young man, under the jets of the waterfall, felt a surge of strength. The young man shouted that he had succeeded. Although he had not noticed such an effect so quickly before. The guy thought, it means that the presence of the girl influenced the increase in his spiritual energy. In an instant, he grabbed the girl and pulled her towards him. She was scared, but he paid no attention and shouted for them to start paired cultivation. Then the girl understood his idea and allowed him to take her in his arms. She asked if he was sure it would work. The guy decided to try, holding her in his arms, he began to cultivate. In this way, the young man replenished his spiritual energy, which he so needed during sowing. He had plant seeds prepared. Then he decided to make an irrigation well. The effect of the spiritual power exceeded his expectations, the plants grew so quickly that it was possible to harvest every other day. The cabbage heads were already round in shape and large. Uncle Kunu came along with the young guys to see how things were going. None of them could believe their eyes how vegetables could grow so quickly. Everyone started asking the hero how he did it. Others said that it was incredible and that it would be possible to reap several harvests. The people were very happy that a hero appeared in their village. At this time, the young man and the rest of the people on the field were watched by their enemies, the trio, Zhao Xuanchen and Li Ainei, along with the merchant. They were hiding behind the trees. The men asked the merchant to release his bug onto our hero's field so that the insect would destroy the entire crop. One of the men doubted his ability to eat the entire harvest. Then the clerk said that in the air the insect would multiply and there would be a lot of them, because he paid a lot of money for it. The man opened the jar and released the insect into the field. The air really had a magical effect on the beetle, it multiplied at a breakneck speed. There were hundreds of beetles with large mouths and teeth. The workers in the field shouted that this could not happen, their crops would be destroyed by insects that flew from afar in whole black clouds. The peasants tried to kill the beetles, but they could not, since they hit the plants with their hose, not the beetles. Everyone was very upset and thought that the harvest was over. No matter how hard people tried, they could not do anything, the beetles became more and more numerous. They hid behind plants, in the soil, flew in the air, and then gnawed plant stems. Only our hero realized that it was necessary to make several devices to combat pests. But there was little time, as the beetles ate the green leaves at great speed. The guy mentally tried all the known and unknown methods of fighting, but he couldn't come up with anything quick and efficient. The boy even went one-on-one -on -one with a big, big beetle that could have been their leader, but nothing good came of it. He just chased him around the field. The guy remembered his girlfriend Dunmei for the pendant. The guy was angry with himself for not being able to come up with anything. When suddenly the one for whom the young man remembered appeared. She ran ahead of him across the field, but did not touch the ground with her feet, but hovered in the air. She radiated her bright aura in all directions. A beetle, who was their leader, flew towards her, followed by a whole cloud of his brothers. The girl created an energy ball with her own hands, which consisted of her spiritual power. Dunmei extended her hands forward and a stream of energy rushed towards the small evil insects. It cleared the space of evil and bugs and was very strong and all-encompassing. 
The young man stood closest to the field and saw what his girlfriend was doing. All the other people who stood further began to shout that this was the real power of the hero, the sacred light. Our hero was worried about the beauty, because such work required a lot of spiritual strength. He was glad that she helped him when he was in a difficult situation. But the girl's condition deteriorated sharply, she began to cough, choke, and then fell to her knees. The young hero wanted to follow her, but she disappeared. The guy asked mentally what was wrong with her, but there was no answer. His pendant hung around his neck, but did not create any more radiation. All the people who were on the field came running and surrounded him. They complimented him and praised his abilities. Then each of them wanted at least one hair from his head. The guy quickly decided to leave there, because he was in a hurry to find out how his girlfriend Dunmei was feeling now. Suddenly, on the way, the young man noticed three people. The men were talking as they ran. One of them said that even though their parasites were destroyed, they would never give up. Another suggested coming up with something else. The young man understood everything. He clenched his fist and told himself that these three, Zhao Xuanchen and Li Ainei along with the merchant, had definitely angered him now and he needed to start taking serious measures. When the boy ran home, he immediately said the girl's name several times. But he did not see her and did not even feel her essence. Our hero sat in the lotus position and held the pendant in his hand, but there was no answer. The guy remembered that that time he got into the pendant through his tear. Su Tsinyo remembered the girl when he last saw her on the field, she felt bad and disappeared. His tear slowly fell onto the magic pendant. He hoped that everything would be fine with her. The pendant slowly activated. The guy thought that he couldn't cry, but he was very sad and could. The guy was transported to virtual reality, where he stood on the sand, and behind him was a blue lake. The sky was blue with white passing clouds that were reflected in the water. When suddenly he saw a girl lying unconscious on the sand. He quickly ran up to her and took her in his arms. He called her name several times and asked her to wake up. But the girl did not react, her eyes were closed. The guy asked himself what to do next. He remembered that after the contract was made, his essence was supposed to support her. The young man realized that he needed to train in order to increase the level of spiritual power, which, perhaps, would be transferred to the girl. The young man was still sitting in the room and holding the pendant in his hands. But he knew that there, in another reality, the girl had already come to life, and she felt better. Although this led to the fact that he himself could not even move now, since all his spiritual power was given to him for Dunmei. Now he could only train while holding the pendant. The girl said that he practices star martial art, but then she will teach him another martial art that is much stronger. He said he would look forward to it. Then the girl decided that the time had come for him to learn one technique, cutting the void. She said that now she needs to listen to him carefully. As the energy sinks into the body, moving to the celestial root, it passes through the point where the soul is located and then descends to the navel point. Su Tsinyo tried the trick. It was like a sword in his hands, but it was invisible, only tangible, but it worked flawlessly. The clay jug standing on the table shattered into pieces. Very little time passed, but the young man had already mastered this technique and was even thinking about improving the technique. His girlfriend praised him for his diligence. The boy practiced this skill again and again to master it perfectly. He wielded the skill skillfully and after a while he could create a powerful energy beam that destroyed everything. But the young man, as an inventor, decided to change and improve it. He attached a very thin TSI thread to the sword. The young man explained to the beauty that if you apply enough force, you can control the direction of the thread and do the actions that are necessary for the owner of the power. The young man decided to show off his knowledge and skills to the beautiful beauty. He called himself a the mad creator and was pleased with himself today. The boy thought that by refining the method of cutting the void, 
he had made it precise and simple, and if he raised his level of spiritual power, he could achieve better results. Su Tsinyo immediately began training, he sat in the lotus position and closed his eyes. He noted to himself that he had finally reached the level of tendon strengthening. When suddenly the boy heard some quiet sound, he looked at the ring on his hand, something opened there, and suddenly a rectangular-shaped thing appeared. The young man asked what it was and answered that it looked like a small generator. He thought that such a thing would be useful to him here, immortals can generate spiritual energy, and here is its generator. The boy decided to immediately see if the device was working. The effect was immediate, his hair stood up, his spiritual energy was overwhelming. Although he was so small, he was very powerful. At the same time, Uncle Kunu and Master Lin came to our hero's house and saw that something strange was happening to him, they were surprised, but at the same time they were afraid for his life. The young man told the guests that he was fine, he just had a new hairstyle. He laughed it off and asked them if he wasn't handsome. The guests laughed in response, making sure that everything was fine with him, and he was even joking. But the uncle and the master came on business. The elderly man brought signatures from 400 residents who want Su Tsinyo to become their village chief. The young man said that he was grateful to his uncle for this, so he would try to justify their trust. The old man said that the hero deserved it, since he had already done so many good deeds for the people of their village. Master Lin supported him and said that everyone would respect and love him. Suddenly, another honorary local resident who kept the seal of the village chief entered the house, he told the guy that he had specially brought him the Dao seal. The old man placed a small tied bag on the table in front of the young man. He said that when he grows old, the well-being of the village will depend on the hero. The old man told the young man that behind the seal there is a secret place where knowledge about many techniques is stored, but the path is very dangerous, so he needs to be careful. The young man said that with him the villagers would be fed and clothed. The old man said that he would go and gather the villagers and declare the hero Su Tsinyo the village chief. The whole village should celebrate this event. After some time, the whole village gathered in the square. On a stage made from wooden planks that rose above the ground, two people appeared, the elder and our hero. The old man told everyone present that the great hero Su Tsinyo, whom they all admired, collected 500 signatures to become the village chief of Guanming village. Suddenly a voice was heard, telling the old man to wait. It was the grain merchant who stood in the center. Zhao Xuanchen, Li Ainei and several other people stood with him. Each of them threatened the young man with death. But all the people shouted that they would protect their hero and leader. The young man mentally asked the pendant what the level of his enemies was and whether he could win. The clerk threatened the young man more than anyone else, he told him not to hide behind a large number of people. But the young man told him that he, like a fish on the shore, was useless. Then the boss began to offer to fight one-on-one, -on -one, without people. Zhao Xuanchen told him to dismiss the people and go fight the merchant. Their men were still behind. After some time, the enemies stood opposite the young man, who was alone. They all stood in the river in shallow water. The young man said that he could defeat them with one blow, they did not believe him. The young man was up to something. Using his generator, the hero decided to punish his enemies. He quietly lowered it into the water and the small device created a powerful charge of energy in the water. Water, as a good conductor, transferred the charge to the people in the water. All opponents received a powerful electric shock and their hair and bodies were shocked. The young man stood and watched as the merchant and his people, having received what they deserved, began to climb out of the water onto the shore. They all ran away. The men had frightened faces and could not come to their senses, they had never experienced this in their lives. Their bodies were still shaking and their hair was sticking up. The young man asked the former village elder who these people were and who was behind them. The elder replied that these were bandits from Tsimina, so you need to be on your guard, 
because they are very bad people. The guy stood in front of the locals, they were all worried that they didn't have much food, but they were more worried that the bandits might attack their women and children. Then the young elder decided to go and ask the elder how far away these bandits lived. The young man understood that the threat to children and women was very great, so he had a plan. The new headman turned to the local residents and said that they needed to build fortifications overnight so they could defend their homes. But people said that this would not help because there are hundreds of bandits there. The peasants said that the level of the opponents was very high, because their leaders were already at the peak of the spiritual realm. The women who stood behind the men with children were most saddened. But the young man was confident in himself and said that if they wanted, they could defeat any enemy, just the main thing was to show ingenuity and have a strong belief in victory. The new headman continued that everyone will now do what he says, all this to preserve their homes and families. Fifteen minutes later our hero handed out the drawings. He said that he had made a plan of the town and outlined the defensive structures, each group must follow his plan to every detail. All the people, divided into groups, began to study the plan developed by the hero. They believed him. The new headman thought that the bandits had no idea what lay ahead. The next morning, a large group of horsemen rushed quickly along the road leading to the village, led by the leader of the bandits. He kept repeating so that no one would lag behind. After some time, the bandits came out of the forest and surrounded the settlement. Their leader told the villagers of Guanmin to give up all their food, women and money, kneel down and beg for mercy. Our hero was at the gates of the village, which was now surrounded by a wall according to his drawings. He told the bandits not to dream, but to get out while they were alive. The enemies shouted how dare a bunch of peasants threaten them. The leader shouted to the bandits to destroy the village and raise it to the ground. All the riders took out their weapons and rushed forward. On their horses, the men rode at full speed towards the walls of the village to begin killing the inhabitants and plundering the village. Their leader was ahead of everyone. Suddenly the horses, at full speed, fell into trap pits, which the peasants had dug and disguised according to the young man's plan. The animals broke their legs and necks and crushed their riders. The young man's plan was that he knew the location of underground caves, from which a good trap could be made for horsemen. No wonder the young man studied geology. But not all the warriors fell into the trap. Their leader turned his horse and shouted to the right flank that there was a trap here. He was surprised how the residents dug such deep holes at night. One of the horsemen reported to the bandit leader that he saw barbed wire around the village. The boss told the bandits to get off their horses, climb the walls and cut the wire. A few minutes later the enemies did what their leader ordered. But it turned out that the wire was energized, and they all received an electric shock and died. This trap was made by Master Lin and his assistants. They used a hero generator for this. Having unrolled the wire along the wall, the villagers connected it to a generator, this is an excellent power system, which was organized by a young master according to the village chief's design. Many of the robbers met their death by hanging from the wire, but many of the enemies were still alive. They were led by the leader of the gang, he shouted at them to go forward. Three warriors appeared in front of our hero, each of them had a sword behind his back. The head of the Tsimina bandits asked the young chief what other tricks they had in store for them. Suddenly, a strong stream of water began to pour on the three bandits under pressure, knocking them off their feet. It was Uncle Kunu and another young girl who used hoses to thoroughly wet the bandits. The robbers thought why they were simply wetted, because this would not stop them. The villains did not know that our hero had prepared a surprise for them, he threw his generator into the water near the enemies. A powerful discharge pierced the wet bodies and clothes of the three bandits, it happened so instantly that they could not avoid it, their bodies arched, their hair stuck up. The young man was pleased with himself, since everything was exactly as he had planned. He said everything worked perfectly and they won. Suddenly the headman saw that three villains, led by the boss, 
were approaching him. They looked very shabby, they had abrasions and wounds, but they were still alive. The leader of the bandits was especially angry, who, gritting his teeth, hissed that he had not lost yet. The leader jumped very high and found himself behind the girl, who had previously been watering them with a hose and was standing not far from the young elder. The robber grabbed the beauty by the neck and shouted that he would kill the girl if anyone approached him. All the young people rushed to help. They wanted to kill the villain. They all shouted what he wanted from the poor girl. But the boss of the robbers fought them off with kicks, and he, taking the girl with one hand, advanced to the village gates to escape. The bandit was very aggressive and could strangle the beauty at any moment. A brave young man blocked his path. But the villain shouted that no one would take his girl away from him. Our hero ordered the main robber to leave the girl alone and move away. At that moment, dark clouds covered the sun. The robber shouted that he would strangle her. Suddenly the sun again peeked out from behind the clouds and it seemed to our hero, who was carefully watching the actions of the robber, that he was squinting his eyes. For a moment, the villain covered his eyes with his hand, from the sun, but then again firmly pressed the girl's throat with his other hand. Su Tsinyo noticed that the robber had something wrong with his eyes. The new headman suggested to the enemy that they fight one on one, if the hero wins, then the bandit will let the girl go and leave this village alone, if the enemy wins, then he will be in charge here. It was risky to offer such conditions, since the robber had a high level, but our hero was confident of victory. He mentally told Dunmei not to worry about him. Then the main robber pushed the girl into the arms of his assistant and told him not to take his eyes off her. The villain pulled out his sword and began to approach the new village chief. Su Tsinyo decided to take up positions and wanted to draw a circle on the ground, he was unarmed and decided to keep the enemy at a distance. But everything he had planned was destroyed in the next moment. The enemy decided to play by his own rules rather than listen to instructions. He jumped high up and attacked the guy from the air unexpectedly and quickly. Our hero realized that this was a scoundrel, and not an obedient boy. The first blow missed, the sword whistled right next to the hero's head, it's good that he managed to dodge. The second attack began immediately. The blow that the robber wanted to make was intended to be very powerful. The enemy held the sword with both hands and attacked again from above. Our hero tried to resist the enemy, but his level was not sufficient to defend against such powerful blows. No matter how hard the guy tried to put up a defense, he was weaker than the enemy. With both hands, Su Tsinyo could barely hold back another blow. His protective field was broken into dozens of fragments from the blows of the main robber. A little more and the enemy's precise blows will reach his body. The first time the blow knocked the young man over and he flew several meters and crashed into the wall. The boy thought that with his current level, he could not block the enemy's blows. The young man barely stood up, the villain advanced on him, with a sword raised high in his hand. The enemy was very pleased with himself and confident of his victory. He said that there was one last blow left and it would all be over. Our hero, sitting on the ground, repeated after the robber his words that everything would be over. He prepared to attack, his invisibility sword appeared in his hands and cut everything. The bandit leader's assistants noticed this and decided to give the boss a hint. One of them shouted for the boss to be careful about the hero's sword. But he didn't understand what kind of sword it was, because the guy didn't have one before. A moment later, when the leader looked at the young man, he felt a weapon in his chest that mortally wounded him. He only said one word, why? Our hero stood over the body of a defeated enemy. The two robbers who survived, leaving the girl behind, took to their heels. The villagers began to catch up with the bandits with pitchforks and shovels. The girl was freed, she sat on the grass, not believing that she was saved. Our hero told people not to worry, because a few mongrels, without a leader, would not be able to do anything to them. 
Dunmei mentally asked the hero how he was able to defeat such a strong enemy with a higher level than him. The young man joked that she sometimes slows down. The young man wanted to explain everything in order, since he was closely watching the boss of the robbers, the guy noticed his squint. When the robber held the girl by the throat, the sun suddenly came out, and the enemy began to avoid sunlight, so the hero assumed that he was colorblind, that is, he did not distinguish between some colors. Since the enemy was colorblind, he would not notice the use of TSI, and the young man decided to hide the invisibility sword behind his back. Only at the last minute did the enemy realize this, but it was already too late. All the people rushed to thank the young elder for the victory over the robbers. Only yesterday they all thought that they were doomed and that their women and children would be taken away by villains, but now they are free and happy. The girls began to thank the young man most of all, especially the girl whom the gang leader grabbed and wanted to steal. She said that since the guy saved her, he can now do anything. But the young man wanted to quickly get rid of these girls' advances. His pendant began to directly burn his body. He felt that something had happened to his Dunmei. The young man interrupted this scene of harassment with caresses and told the girls that that was enough. All the beauties were upset, because they were counting on his attention. Su Tsinyo was in a hurry, he wanted to see his girlfriend. The pendant became hotter and hotter. He shouted to all the people that he had to go because he had urgent business. When a few minutes later he plunged into the virtual world of the pendant, he saw his Dunmei on the shore of the lake, sitting on the sand. The young man approached her and asked what was wrong with her. The beauty said that she didn't feel good, because when all the girls started pestering him, she felt that this made her feel hurt and unpleasant. Then the guy said that she was probably jealous of other girls, Dunmei repeated this word after him, jealous? The girl thought, she felt better and better next to him. The young man decided that they would not talk about it anymore, since there were more important things to do. After all, he had the seal of the village chief, and he suggested that they go to the forbidden area. After some time, the guy went to the entrance to the cave along the road that the young man from the village had once shown him. Before entering, he stopped and pulled the elder's seal from his bosom. The guy held her forward in front of him at arm's length and told her to open the door in the forbidden land. A guard with a long axe appeared in front of the young man. He said that in order to open the restricted area, he needed to be at least at the spirit realm level and he only had ten days to do this. Our hero was angry with the guard, why didn't he tell him about this restriction earlier, because he could have prepared. The girl said that it is not realistic to achieve such a level in such a short time. But then, after thinking a little, an interesting idea arose in his head and he told Dunmei not to worry, because he is a hero and ten days is not so little. The guy decided to settle in a small courtyard not far from the forbidden land. There was a chicken coop and a large yard where the hens took their chicks out to nibble on the green grass. The young man chose a quiet place for his training, there was a spring on the hill, a whole field in front of the small house, and a small farm. The young man started training. He sat in the lotus position and closed his eyes, remembering everything the girl taught him. He did not forget about his plan, the invention of an incandescent lamp for immortals. The boy sat down at the table and took everything he might need to invent tools and materials. Su Tsinyo knew the principle of operation of the device, but suitable materials had to be looked for. He made with his own hand something like an incandescent filament and placed it under a glass flask. The young man was pleased with himself and again felt like an inventor, although he repeated something that had already been invented a long time ago, but he did it with his own hands. The lamp glowed brightly. Dunmei really liked this little miracle, Suddenly she said that if he gives her this lamp, then she will become his girlfriend forever. The young man laughed and said that she could take the lamp anyway, he would make another. She was very happy and decided to hug him right there, sitting on the table, when he came up to her to hug her too. The guy said he would make a lot more spiritual things of pants and socks. She said she wanted to be the first to try everything. 
The young man thought it looked a little too cheesy. After a moment the young man thought that he had been distracted from his plan. Now he needs to come up with a spiritual irrigation system to transform all this into food, because he only has ten days. The young inventor decided to use enriched water to water vegetables and feed poultry. He charged the entire container with his spiritual energy. The field irrigation system worked flawlessly, and the harvest should exceed all expectations. Vegetables and fruits grew literally before our eyes. The next day there were already results. The vegetables were already ripe and were very tasty and aromatic. The young man had enough of them, it gave him a new charge of energy and vigor. The young man felt a surge of spiritual strength. He thought that if seeds were used during cultivation, the effect would be doubled. The boy was happy with everything he had achieved, his level of spiritual strength increased. He looked at poultry and thought that now it would be better to call them spiritual chickens and ducks. Three days later, when the sun was at the very top of the sky, not far from the places where our hero lived, a cat's squeal was heard. One small earthly cat decided to block the path of Master Ban, who was a huge and black monster with big teeth. The earthly cat was much smaller and cuter than the master. There was a fight there. Ban was filled with spiritual energy, but the earthly cat was not a simpleton and scratched him, he was defeated. With his tongue hanging out, Master Ban lay on the grass and begged for mercy. The earthly fellow might have spent a long time jumping on top of the lying poor fellow, but he smelled the wonderful smell of fresh meat. He quickly jumped onto a high tree branch and looked into the distance. Then the tabby cat saw a well-groomed field of vegetables in front of a small house and a young man who was training, sitting on the porch of the house. The wise cat remembered how the young man first appeared in the village. This happened when a fireball fell to the ground, because of this the beast was unable to be reborn and moved to the next stage. The earthly cat decided that it was the young man's fault, that he could not be reborn and become a great cat, so he decided to take revenge on the young man. The little animal decided to destroy the young man. The animal ran to the house and thought that if it were not for this man, he would have been a big tiger, and he would not have been here a long time ago. The little animal imagined himself lying in a cozy chair, and next to him there were many cats who would like to please him, since he could become a nobleman. The cat recalled that he was cultivating at a very high level and was about to break through to the highest level when a fireball appeared, which caused his transformation to be interrupted. After this incident, no matter how hard the beast tried to return everything back, he failed, he even turned into an ordinary earthly cat, although he retained his unusual strength. The ugly little animal jumped over the fence and was already near the house, with only one thought in his head, about revenge. At this time, our hero was at the table that stood in the yard. He had a knife in one hand and a dead chicken in the other. It was the first bird that grew up on spiritual food, and therefore became spiritual food itself. Suddenly the young man saw a cat who ran to the table and began to meow. He held his tail high and looked at the chicken. The guy cut off one leg and handed it to the animal, saying that the cat also wanted a piece of spiritual chicken. The cat thought that he was here for revenge, and not for snacks. But the smell of the meat was so aromatic that he, being a gourmet, smelled its aroma. Su Tsinyo came closer to the small animal, seeing that he did not eat meat, and told him to definitely try it and like it. A minute later, succumbing to persuasion, the cat was already trying a chicken leg. The beast thought that when he ate, he would have even more strength to take revenge. The animal felt a surge of strength, the cat thought how this chicken has such spiritual power, he had never eaten such unusual meat before. The animal wanted even more meat. The man gave him another whole carcass. The cat wondered how this guy could breed such spiritual birds, then what level of cultivation had he reached? The smart animal thought it was right that it did not attack the young man right away, otherwise it is unknown what level he has, since instead of victory, it would have been a defeat. The owner of the house approached the cat and stroked it. 
He said that this animal was probably a homeless animal and, if he wanted, he could live with him for now. The beast began to think, and a wonderful idea came to his mind. He bent straight into the young man's arms, pressed his whole body against him and meowed cheerfully. The evil one wanted to bide his time for revenge. The young man stroked the animal and said that now he needs to be given a name and he is good at giving names. The cat thought that he would behave like an ordinary animal so as not to arouse suspicion. The young man decided to name his household member Chjeo Tsai. It seemed to him that this name would bring happiness to the animal, as it meant lucky. But the cat did not take this name well, he was not happy. The young man said that the name was very suitable for an animal and now they would live happily together. At this time, at the foot of the mountain, not far from the small house, where rays of light penetrated through the treetops, the growling of wild animals was heard. There was a girl who was standing on the path when three wild huge black cats were approaching her. It was the princess of the southern kingdom, Van Lutzi, who was armed with a sword. The animals that surrounded her were cunning and fast, they smelled of meat, but the smell did not come from the girl. The girl was very upset when she saw in front of her such strong animals that acted together. She thought that she would die soon, why did she run away from the palace alone? At the same time, our hero's cat Chjeo Tsai, who did not like what his owner called him, decided to run away from the house where he was sheltered. He jumped out the window and ran across the field. The touchy kid ran further and further from the young man's house. He thought what a shame it was to be called by a common name, as if he were some kind of barn cat. Suddenly, because the cat ate a lot of spiritual bird meat, it was reborn and the small animal turned into a huge black demon of the cat breed. The animal has received a new level. This level was what the beast had before seeing the fireball, it had recovered to the state of an immortal demon. At this time, at the foot of the mountain, the girl, raising her sword, shouted to the three wild cats so that the animals should not approach her, otherwise she would kill them all. The beauty had good training and was confident in herself. This bunch of demonic beasts were of the lowest level, so she thought she could handle them. Suddenly a terrible noise was heard behind the girl, three black, wild cats came into terrible trepidation, their eyes widened. They were afraid of a black monster that emerged from the forest. A second later, the three animals were no longer on the path, they ran away. Only the girl remained standing there. The beauty turned around and was taken aback. The formidable opponent who sent the three demonic cats running was right in front of the princess. It was a black monster that was moving quickly straight towards the princess. Its size was huge, it had strong paws and sharp teeth. The monster easily took the girl into its mouth and ran to the young man's house. Princess Van Lutzi screamed to be released. It's good that the beast did not squeeze its mouth, but simply held the princess in its mouth. The beast came up with the idea that he would give the beauty to his master, which made him so strong again, for a reward. He was already dreaming of how the young man gave him a lot of chicken meat. A few minutes later, a huge black monster was already near the gates of our hero's house. As soon as the beast crossed the gate, it turned into an ordinary house cat. The beauty was lying on the lawn in front of the house. Out of fear, she was afraid to open her eyes, what was wrong with her, where she was. When the princess opened her eyes, she saw an ordinary medium-sized domestic cat near her and heard meowing. She was sitting on the lawn near a small house, from the window of which light fell. The girl realized that the huge beast had turned on the small cat. The monster brought her to his master's house. The princess looked out the window and saw an incandescent lamp made by the young man, she thought that there was only one torch, and how light it was here, probably the owner of the house was very resourceful. The beauty saw a lawn sprayer and thought that the owner was very inventive and loved nature. The princess of the southern kingdom Van Lutzi marveled at how everything in the courtyard was skillfully arranged using spiritual power. It seemed to her that the owner loved life and nature. Suddenly water splashed from the sprayer. 
The girl screamed in surprise and jumped up. She covered herself with her hand, but her hair and clothes were wet. She felt cold. Just when our hero heard the scream, he came out of the house and asked what his catch Jayotsai had already done. Suddenly, in front of him, the young man saw a beautiful girl standing near the house. She asked the guy who he was. A cat was running between two people on the grass and meowing all the time. The girl thought that the powerful beast in front of the guy had turned into a simple house cat, what kind of spiritual power does he have? Chjeotsai approached the young man and he understood him immediately. The owner asked that the cat gave him a gift in the form of a girl, and in return he wanted food. The cat showed that the girl was wet. Then Su Tsinyo invited the beauty to go into the house, let her change clothes, sat her down at the table and gave her hot ginger tea. When the girl drank the tea, she warmed up a little. The cold left her body and warmth went up from below. The ginger tea that the guest drank had an immediate effect on her, she felt strength and a surge of vigor. The girl wondered how he could act so quickly. The stranger felt powerful spiritual energy in her body. She immediately stood up and wanted to thank the young man. Her spiritual level rose from just one cup of tea, she felt it very strongly. She had never felt anything like this in her life before. The beauty told the young man that she felt much better than before and her spiritual strength had increased. The girl said that she was from the southern kingdom, lost in these lands and she had no one else to turn to, if the owner allowed, she would stay and drink one cup of tea a day. The beauty said that her name is Van Lutzi and she is ready to do anything for the master of this house. The young man asked if she was ready to do that much for him. He looked mysteriously at her figure. When he said what he wanted, the guest asked him again whether he really wanted it. Some moans and screams began to be heard from the house into the yard, the girl screamed for him not to do this. A bright light came through the window, it became dark. Then the guest's voice was heard saying that it was already ready. It turned out that the owner had made brown stockings for her, in which she felt very comfortable. The young man could not deny himself the pleasure of watching his guest through the crack in the door. He was pleased that she settled in his house. But the guy completely forgot about the practice of immortality. Finally, when the beauty came out of the bedroom, having changed into stockings and a short robe, she was very attractive. She asked what she looked like. The guy turned and was taken aback by what he saw. The spiritual power that was in the stockings gave a powerful impulse to her feminine essence, the girl simply walked towards the young man with a readiness to please him. The guy realized how the spiritual stockings affected her. She went to him saying that she was ready to do whatever he said. Suddenly the young man shouted that she should not come near him. The young man began to see her entire internal structure, this change frightened him. Now he sent the guest to bed, and he decided to chat with Dunmei. He told her to come into being, because it was her doing. The image of the beauty appeared in the darkness, she said that he was doing the wrong thing, because there were only a few days left for training to get into the forbidden zone, and he was obsessed with girls. The guy asked to teach him a new way of learning in order to learn everything faster. The girl said that there is a way, this is visualization. You can see the inner workings of things through the outside world. Dunmei continued to explain that the guy recently started the visualization process and saw all the internal meridians of this Van Lutzi. The young man agreed that it was a terrible sight. The young man sat in the lotus position and began training. He thought that if he met the right person, he could increase his cultivation level and get closer to the great Tao. The boy continued his training and realized that if everything in this world is compared to programs, then the visualization plan is the program code. Then the guy walked up to the table and started drawing. Dunmei explained that you can create visualizations based on feelings, the more you create, the closer you will be to the truth. He thought about the code. The next morning, when the sun illuminated the courtyard with bright rays near the house where our hero lived, a terrible noise was heard at the gate. 
It was some tall man who decided to take out the gate with his foot. There were three uninvited guests. One of the men said that the guy who killed the merchant lives here. Another called the chief above them, grandfather. The older man said that he would punish the guy. Three strangers, having knocked down the gate, walked into the yard. Van Lutze looked out of the house, she was wearing a short dress and stockings that the owner of the house had made. She told the guys that the gentleman was resting now. The girl closed the door. But one of the guests pointed at the house and said that the owner was not polite and would not tell him what to do. Another man walked over and kicked open the doors with all his might. The beauty was frightened, three strangers were already on the threshold. One of them said that they did not need permission to enter. This man was very aggressive. He is the first of them to enter the house. Van Lutze realized that this man was stronger than her and she could not cope with him. The men behaved very rudely. The three walked through the living room and headed to the bedroom. The man who was more aggressive than the others shouted for Suit Sinyo to come out now. When the three men entered the bedroom, they saw a young man sleeping on the bed, and a cat nearby on the floor. There were drawings with different signs scattered around the bed. The eldest of the strangers raised one. A drawing was drawn on a piece of paper, the older man asked his two partners what it was. One replied that it was a high-level talisman. The elderly man was surprised that the owner painted it himself. The young man continued to sleep soundly on the bed. The boss said that it was outrageous that such a valuable thing as this drawing, a talisman of strength, was lying around like garbage. The old man looked at the food that the cat was eating, he felt the energy that came from him, and said that even the cat's food is tens of times more valuable than all the lost food. The stranger approached the bed and looked at the sleeping young man, he thought that this guy was simply incredible. At this time, Van Lutze ran into the bedroom and shouted to the gentleman to wake up. The girl jumped onto the bed and tried to wake up the owner of the house. She shook him and said loudly that three strangers had broken into their house. The beauty was in a short dress, when she sat next to the young man on the bed, it was a very interesting situation and the older man, unable to contain his base feelings, said that this was wonderful. But the girl could not allow the stranger to talk like that, she came up and wanted to kick him on his head. Only she miscalculated her strength, as the man grabbed her leg. The girl screamed for the man to let her go. Suddenly, an invisible energy hand grabbed the stranger's hand holding the girl's leg and pulled it away from her. The owner woke up and said that we couldn't do that. The boss immediately felt that the young man had powerful spiritual energy and should not be underestimated. The stranger asked for forgiveness and said that he could not resist seeing such beauty. The young man said that if a man wants stockings, then he has a lot of them and he makes them himself, but he doesn't need to grab a girl. The guy handed him a pair of brown stockings. The stranger took a pair of stockings and said that it was a beautiful thing, handmade, a very excellent quality. The girl thought that the guest was not interested in her legs, but in her stockings. Then the man took a red bra from his bosom. He said at the same time that he had something similar and maybe the gentleman knew what this thing was for. He handed the bra to the owner of the house. The girl thought it was a very beautiful thing, but for some reason looking at it she was very embarrassed. The young man was very surprised to see such a thing here. The stocking master thought, where did such things come from here? Maybe there are still people from the future who were here before me. The boy examined the logo on the LSP bra. An elderly man asked if the owner of the house knew this sign. The old man said that these symbols are the hallmark of the generation of business genius Lausipi, who was an extraordinary man whose inventions changed lives, but this man then disappeared. The young man thought that this logo coincided with what he had and there was something to think about. The owner of the house asked the elderly guest to come to the table. When the old man sat down at the table next to the young man, he said that Lao Sipi was not missing, but was hiding, he also created something called Sushi Yuan, 
he had a token that allowed him to command everything. Suddenly our hero remembered that he had a token in his ring that said, Greatest Order of LSP, so it had to do with Su Shi Yun. Van Lutzi approached the table, she put red apples on the table and told the guests to try the fruits grown by the owner. The elderly man took the apple and took a bite of it. As soon as he swallowed a piece, he felt spiritual power and realized that the fruit could develop the body and increase the level of cultivation. The old man was very cunning, he realized that this young man was not simple, maybe he was from the circle of Sushi Yuan people and if he cooperated with him, he would have a hundred million and he would become the richest man. The guest and the owner were eating apples while sitting at the table. The old man said that he had an idea and he did not know or tell him about it. To which the young man said that since he doubts, then let him not speak. The boy knew that, judging by his experience of watching various films, nothing good should come from such words. The old man immediately changed his expression and the smile disappeared. A minute later Van Lutzi came to the table, the owner of the house told her to distribute the apples ripened in the garden to the villagers. The girl said that she would fulfill the request. The elderly businessman thought how the young man could distribute such valuable fruits to ordinary people, since they could be sold at a profit. The two accomplices who were with him were also surprised by the decision. The man got up from his chair. The old man bowed to the owner of the house and said goodbye. The young man also stood up and bowed in response. When the trio left the gate, one of the men said that how could they return empty-handed. The old man smiled sarcastically and told him that he had never left empty-handed. The old man went into the garden, there were ripe fruits lying under the apple trees. He told the young people that the villagers don't even know how valuable the fruits are, so they need to buy apples from them cheaply. Several days passed, the beautiful girl stood on the balcony and looked into the distance. She was very thoughtful. She was wearing a red short dress and stockings. A maid, dressed in a long dress, approached her from behind with a tray, bowed and said that the owner had sent her an apple. The lady took the red apple and asked where this spiritual apple came from. The maid replied that the fruits were bought from the Chamber of Commerce at a high price, but the place where they were grown was kept secret. The girl thought that it was Lu who grew the fruit and after she gets out of here, she will definitely find him. At this time, a skirmish took place in the Chamber of Commerce. A gang of bald robbers came to the merchants who were selling spiritual apples, the leader of which demanded that they give him the seeds of the fruit. The merchant said that it was their elder who created the spiritual fruits, and the robbers would not receive any seeds. The leader of the bald guys pointed his finger at the first of the merchants and told him to repeat it. All the people on the merchant's side armed themselves with hoes, shovels and scythes. The leader of the bald men called them hillbillies and said that there must be someone normal among them. The merchant replied that the level of development of their village chief was incomprehensible and let them not become arrogant, otherwise they will get what they deserve. The bandit leader's assistant said that the village chief is a strong man. Then the leader said that they must get their hands on the spiritual fruit. The main bandit thought that if the headman agreed to cooperate with them, they would get rich, and if he refused, they would simply kill him. At this time, in the small house, Su Tsinyo was busy drawing signs. The guy was painting with brown paint on yellowish paper using a brush. The young man drew a drawing with a brush and at the same time said that the child on the paper was a wild animal, frozen in attack. Dunmei hovered near the table all the time. She took the drawing and looked at it carefully. The girl said why the frame is so big and round, and that line is long and wide, it needs to be redrawn. Suddenly the young man fell backwards in his chair and hit the floor painfully. He joked that he hadn't met such a strict teacher since he was in kindergarten. Van Lutzi ran into the room at the noise. Then the owner told her, holding out the drawing, that she should use the damaged drawing to start a fire. The young man completely lowered his head and remained sitting on the floor. When the girl left the room, she looked at the drawing and thought to study it. 
The beauty sat down near the burning stove, but she did not want to burn the owner's drawings. Suddenly there was the sound of footsteps behind her. She heard a man ask where their village chief lived. The girl stood up and put the drawing on the table, these people who came were all bald, they were dressed the same, in short pants and brown shirts. They were rude to the girl and she wanted to leave. Their leader came up, took the drawing from the table and sat down in the lotus position by the stove. He looked at the drawing and said what kind of sign it was, which seemed to him to be the cause of all things. The robber plunged into his world. He said that his cultivation had been stagnant for a long time, but today, as soon as he saw this symbol, he saw the light and raised his level. Van Lutze stood behind the leader. She looked at the sitting stranger, who was staring at the drawing, and asked him what he was doing with their firewood. The stranger thought about how such a treasure as drawings could be used in the form of firewood, and who the local elder was. At this time, our hero decided to interrupt his drawing lessons and go out into the yard. He approached the girl and said either they shouldn't eat chicken soup today. Su Tsinyo was stripped to the waist because it was sunny, but he sneezed loudly and blew his nose. Suddenly he noticed a stranger sitting near the stove with his drawing. The owner invited him to stay. Suddenly, the gang leader ran away, and all his accomplices also ran after him. They asked him on the run why they were running away. The boss said that since the headman burned such drawings, then his level is high, he is smart and strong, he must be pleased. The leader's assistant asked how he could please him if he had everything, even a beauty. Some time later, when the owner's cat was basking on the grass near the house. Someone picked him up and stroked him affectionately. These were three beautiful girls in short dresses and bare shoulders, they had long straight hair. The one who stood in the middle and took the cat said that the cat was very cute. The cat Chjeotsai was outraged by this behavior of unfamiliar girls, because he considered himself a ferocious beast and did not like the hands of others. Behind the girls stood the bandits who had come to the owner of the house before. The leader stroked the cat and said that he hoped that the owner of the house would like the girls who were here as a gift. The wise little animal immediately realized that these girls were here to seduce his master, which meant that these guys had bad intentions. The beast wanted to deal with the villains who had conceived such an insidious plan. The animal transformed into a huge black monster, I will fight. The guys, seeing the monster, ran away. Three girls fell to their knees in front of the demonic animal and begged for mercy. The monster told them to get out and not disturb his owner. The beast was so convincing that everyone ran away. After some time, four sellers of vegetables and fruits gathered between the market rows and discussed that their valuable goods were not in demand here. One of the sellers said that the main trader organized a boycott and now no one comes to their village to buy food. Another suggested going to the headman for advice. Suddenly the beautiful Van Lutze appeared there, holding a loudspeaker. She told the villagers not to panic, the headman specifically sent her to solve the problem. The brave girl looked very attractive in a short dress and stockings that she liked so much. She said she could contact the Huai Chamber of Commerce to buy their vegetables and fruits. One of the merchants was immediately happy, because this is the best chamber of commerce that can pay a fair price for the goods. The sellers began to praise the headman and say that since he Almighty has such connections, the village will begin to prosper, and they will become rich. At the same time, voices were heard in the small house. Dunmay told the young man not to be lazy and to draw well. The girl, like a fairy, hovered around his table, and he sat behind it and showed her the drawing he had just drawn. He said he worked on it for three nights and three days, and what she thought of the drawing. The beauty happily said that he had reached the lowest level of ascension into the realm of immortals, a little more practice and he would be able to go into the forbidden area. The young man leaned down on the chair. He said that he finally felt this level and could then get some sleep. The smell spread throughout the yard of the small house where our hero lived. The cat Jiaotsai, sitting near the gate, 
smelled something fragrant, but he could not leave his post, he was guarding the gate. The animal licked its lips and thought how delicious it smelled. Three bald robbers hiding behind the fence did this on purpose. One of them said that the catnip they used was the most expensive on the market, so no cat could resist the temptation. The smell defeated the animal, and the cat quickly ran along the path leading into the forest. He could not resist such temptation. The leader of the villains was glad that his plan worked. Now the way was clear. The boss told the two assistants that he wanted to see what the owner of the house could do. When suddenly I heard a girl's voice behind me. She said that he was asking about abilities. The beauty stood with her hands folded in front of her, and was confident in herself. The three men laughed. One of them said that it was just a little girl and not some kind of master. They looked down at the girl appraisingly. The leader said that the brother has no special abilities, he just wants to invite the girl to listen to music. The guy had a flute in his hands. When the guy started playing, a magical musical aura was created. Beauty thought it was a sonic attack, and it seemed like these guys had found a magic weapon to attack. The girl thought that all this time she had been eating and drinking in the master's house, and now it was time to repay him. The beauty told the guys that she would like to perform some kind of musical piece with them. She picked up an instrument, a lute. This is a type of Chinese string instrument. When the girl touched the strings, beautiful music flowed across the yard, occupying more and more space. The leader playing the flute thought that the sounds of her instrument were very strong, so the beauty should not be underestimated. The boss told the girl that he had more than just a flute and that he needed to prepare for a surprise. The two assistant bosses began to play Sona. This is a long wind Chinese instrument. The girl realized that she could not surpass such a loud sound of two musicians. The beauty got nervous and stopped playing her instrument. She thought playing it was a waste of time. The charming girl staggered and almost fell. It's good that our hero appeared on time, picked her up and asked what was happening here, he just lay down, and a concert was held here. The leader raised his hand, and his assistants stopped playing their instruments. The boss told the young man that if the boy did not cooperate with them, they would use Sona to send him to heaven. The boss of the robbers was so convincing, he told the young man that they had even prepared a coffin for him. The main villain knew how to morally kill his opponent. One of the robbers suggested playing and dancing. So when the boss played the flute, his two assistants began to dance, holding the coffin on their shoulders. The young elder began to dance himself, and the girl also began to move to the beat of the music. Su Tsinyo didn't understand what was happening, he said what kind of music was this and why couldn't he stop. The beauty explained that this is called the coffin dance, it is a sound attack of the enemy and if he cannot stop, he will become so excited that he will jump into the coffin to commit suicide. The guy, under the influence of the musical attack, continued to dance. The enemy's plan reached him. The young man said that the music is seriously very powerful. The young man had a desire to actually lie down in the coffin to rest. Everyone continued to dance, but only the young man was in real danger. The villains continued to play. One of the robbers told the headman, or he managed to think about collaborating with them, otherwise it might be too late. Su Tsinyo began to think about a rescue plan, because it wasn't Tchaikovsky's Eighth Symphony that was playing, he had to come up with something and break out of the musical trap. When suddenly the guy saw a lute, a Chinese string instrument, which the girl had been playing before, he picked it up. He looked at the instrument and saw that two strings needed tuning. The young man quickly tuned the instrument, gave it to Van Lutze and asked her to play. The girl understood the hero's plan to resist the enemy with the help of music. She played the lute. The robber boss played without stopping. But he realized that he could no longer fully influence the situation. The leader thought why the rhythm of the girl's music was the same as his. He was very tired and drops of sweat were running down his cheeks. 
their musical duel continued. The waves emanating from the opponent's musical instruments resisted each other. The bandit boss did not understand what was happening to his instrument. His hands stopped obeying him. Suddenly, the girl and our hero saw a large explosion occur at the place where the three robbers stood with the coffin. There were clouds of fire and people almost burned alive in it. Su Tsinyo happily said that they won the music attack. Van Lutzi was pleased with herself, she stood and hugged her instrument, which helped defeat the villains. The young man felt something unusual. It was as if his aura, having increased many times over, began to activate his spiritual powers. The young man thought that the impact of the sonic blast had mobilized the aura in him, and his entire body became stronger. The guy broke through to the next level. He was so happy about this that he didn't even want to catch up and punish the three robbers, who were badly burned in the fire, but were still alive. The villains looked at each other, as their appearance was deplorable. The boss couldn't believe that he looked so ugly now. The gang leader still does not understand how the young man figured out to change two strings, and the girl was able to defeat him. The villains had no choice but to flee. The three of them rushed to run away from there. Surprised, Van Lutzi also did not understand how the instrument became so powerful, because before that she had played it, and it was weaker. The guy showed two fingers and replied that he had only tuned two strings. He was pleased with himself, since then it was the only correct decision in this situation. The young man said that the robber's instrument had its limit, so he tuned the lute so that its frequency of sound waves coincided with the frequency of the enemy's instrument. The inventor continued that the resulting resonance was so great that it exceeded the permissible level of the Zerna and it collapsed and exploded. The girl said that she didn't understand anything, but she was still happy. In his room, when the guy was left alone, he sat down at the table. Looking at the ring, the young man wondered that now that he had increased his level, could he pull out anything else? After activating the ring, a fragment of something fell on the table in front of the young man. Su Tsinyo touched this thing with his hand. It looked like a fragment of something, and emitted a strange aura that radiated from the fragment in waves. The young man thought and said that maybe this was a fragment of memory. At that same moment, it seemed to him that he remembered something. Before my eyes stood a man who was wounded in the chest with a sharp weapon and his last words were that little Ao must forget all the hatred, dad wants him to live well and happily. Then the man who had wounded the man quickly ran away, his cape flapping in the wind, and someone shouted the word, daddy. The young man was still in his room. He didn't understand where he got such a strange memory from. Two tears rolled down his cheeks. The young man took out several more items from the ring that could be useful to him in the Forbidden Zone. Dunmei appeared out of nowhere and hovered above him like a fairy, looking at things. The boy squinted, looking at the ring. There were still some objects in the ring, but he could not get them yet. The girl said that these things would help him get into the Forbidden Zone. The young man said that he would prepare harder. When morning came and the sun rose over the small house where our hero lived, the owner's voice was heard in the house for Van Lutzi to bring him a cup of tea. Nobody responded. Then Su Tsinyo walked out to the threshold of the house and looked at the lawn. There was only a cat who meowed. But the young man immediately realized that he had said that the girl might be in the yard. Van Lutzi stood in the yard and said something to some object. She called dad and asked whether she could be heard. The girl turned and saw the gentleman. He asked what she was doing here. Beauty said she couldn't contact her family and didn't know how they were. The owner of the house said that the village was far away and surrounded by mountains, so it was difficult to contact. But then the gentleman said that he had a good idea on how to help the girl with this problem. The young inventor created something like an antenna. He hung several talismans to transmit the signal, and then strengthened it with spiritual energy. Then the girl will be able to send a message. The beauty admitted that this thing looks amazing. 
She asked what the invention was called. The guy replied that it was a signal tower. The young man held a small rectangular object in his hand and said that this thing was shaped this way to better receive messages. Van Lutze's father's voice came from a small rectangular object. Dad called her tenderly, baby, and said, or she heard him. She answered him. At the same time, near the palace where the princess's father lived, strong lightning suddenly flashed and the sounds of thunder were heard. A strong thunderstorm began. The girl's father was sitting in a chair near the table and talking into the phone. He heard that his daughter told him not to worry, she was now in Dao in village. He said he missed her too. When suddenly lightning struck from the sky, the connection was interrupted. The king shouted to the manager why he could not receive the message. The servant bowed and said that it was because of a strong thunderstorm. The king became nervous and told the manager that there had been no messages from his daughter for a long time, so he himself needed to go to the village to see if everything was okay with his daughter. Van Lutze was unable to contact her father, but was able to talk to her friend. She asked her what the news was lately. She said that she eats a lot of spiritual fruits to improve her level. When the owner of the house entered the room, the girl was listening to the message and at the same time sweeping the floor with a broom. The guy said that he should go to the Forbidden Lands, and Van Lutze should stay in the house. The girl told him not to worry, she would take care of everything. The cat was near the owner and jumped into his arms. The girl asked whether the young man was taking Chjeo Tsai with him. The boy replied that this robber kept pestering him, so he would take him. After some time, a man stood at the gate of the house. He came from afar and looked around. He was middle-aged, had a small beard, and his hair was tied up on top of his head and pinned up. The gate was slightly open, so the man, saying that his daughter was probably there, entered it. The guest entered the small courtyard and immediately shouted that he wanted to see his baby, because dad had come to her. On his way stood a signal tower invented by the owner of the house, which interested the man who came. The man looked at the tall thing for a long time and did not understand what it was and what it served. Princess Van Lutze's father entered the small house and saw his daughter. He was glad to meet you. The king sat down at the table. But first of all, he asked the girl when the owner of the house would return. The daughter answered her father that she was completely fine here. But the king of the southern kingdom Chen could not allow his baby to live with an unknown man. He told her this strictly. The guest firmly said that he would stay here and look at the man who made his daughter so devoted. King Chen marveled at the master's inventions and his spiritual fruits and vegetables. He thought that the young man had charmed his daughter, which meant he had real talent. Meanwhile, our hero, together with his cat, who was running next to his owner, walked along a path through forbidden lands. The young man looked at the trees and flowers that had a luminous aura here. A large insect with a long nose flew past the young man and his cat. It buzzed so loudly that it attracted Chjeo Tsai's attention. The cat jumped up and caught the mosquito, slapping it hard with its paws. The young man sprayed himself with something and said that there are a lot of mosquitoes here, so he needs to use a liquid repellent. Suddenly Dunmei appeared behind them. This time she did not float in the air like a fairy, but stood on the ground with her feet. She said that they need to hurry, since time flows differently in these lands. The young man was delighted with his companion. He shouted her name and said that she had materialized. The girl replied that there is a lot of aura in these secret lands, so she can be here in a physical state. Dunmei was very worried. She said that she constantly feels that something is calling her from here and it can be dangerous. The beauty decided to go forward to look around here. The young man began to worry about her, because now she had materialized and she could be in physical danger. The young man took his pet in his arms. He was so worried about Dunmei that he decided to let his cat go with her. The boy handed the furry animal to the beauty. 
The girl took the cat in her arms and doubted whether such a cute cat could protect her from demonic beasts. Chjeotsai was a little puzzled, because he serves his master. Moreover, he thought that the girl somehow looked down on him and underestimated his abilities. But there was nothing to be done, and the small animal ran ahead of the girl along the path leading deep into the secret forest. The girl finally told the guy to wait for her here and not go anywhere. The young man, left alone, took out of his pocket a new thing for the hike, which he had specially prepared, a flashlight. He said that of course he wouldn't go anywhere and chuckled at how naive Dunmei was. When the boy turned on the flashlight and looked around, he saw traces, it looked like the place was infested with demonic beasts. The young man decided why not catch one such animal and play with it. A good plan matured in his head. To implement it, Su Tsinyo found a small forest lake with water lilies. He will release electricity into the water there, and then lure the demonic animal into the pond, so it will be easier to catch it. Our hero was pleased with himself, but he thought that he was still missing the bait. Suddenly the boy saw a little frog cheerfully jumping into the water lilies. The young man looked at the animal and said that he was very sorry and that he would guarantee that nothing bad would happen to him if he acted as bait. The little frog didn't understand why he was the one. But there was no choice, and a minute later the frog was already sitting, tied by a thin thread, the end of which was in the young man's hands. The boy thought that now he had to wait until the animal appeared at the pond. Imagine the boy's surprise when he soon heard a terrible noise from the forest. It was heard that someone big and strong was running along the path. Our hero, hiding behind a large stone, looked out from behind it and said to himself that someone was approaching. At the same moment, Su Tsinyo saw a huge white monster. The spirit beast had a strong body, large paws, and red eyes. He moved at breakneck speed. Many people, armed with swords and long axes, ran after the monster. The hunters shouted to prevent the beast from leaving. The young man did not count on such a turn of events. After all, his plan did not provide for such a case. He wondered where else there were people here. After all, he thought that no one ever visited the secret land. Suddenly, a white monster ran up to the shore of the pond and hovered in the air for a moment. Our hero was already happy about this, now he thought his plan would come true, and the beast would end up in the water. But suddenly the monster, flapping its wings, rose up instead of falling into the pond. For a moment it seemed that the beast, sensing danger in the water, decided to change everything. The young man cried out how the animal could fly. But all the hunters who pursued the monster could not fly. All of them, without stopping, ran into the pond and received an electric shock. The young man shouted that there was danger, but it was too late. People's bodies were pierced with electricity, their hair rose up, they screamed for help. Our hero stopped the current, everyone was alive. Our hero approached the people who had climbed ashore, there were three of them, and said how they felt and that a mistake had occurred. One of the guys said that they were students of Bay Min Academy and were here to hunt. Another group of people approached the place where our hero stood. Their group leader Lo O oh asked what they were doing here instead of catching demonic animals. At the sight of the chief, the three hunters bowed. They all had great respect for their boss. Suddenly one of the hunters pointed his finger at our hero and said that it was he who allowed the demon to escape, using his skills, and he deliberately struck the hunters with lightning in the water in order to wound them. The leader of the group was young, his long hair was pinned into a sticking ponytail. He became very angry and told Su Tsinyo how dare he interfere with their hunt for the demonic beast. Our hero realized that the situation had become more complicated and everything had to be settled peacefully. But one of the hunters whispered to him that the leader of Lo O was very arrogant and domineering, so the young man had to be careful. Su Tsinyo raised both hands and pointed with his palms to calm everyone down. He tried to smile and said that everything that happened was just an accident. 
but the leader of the group believed that the one who interfered with the hunt should be punished. Lo O pulled his long sword out of its sheath and said that he didn't want the culprit to get away without punishment. After him, six more people did the same, so there were seven of them. They all surrounded the young man and pointed their swords at him. The leader told them to listen to his command. Our hero stood in the center of the circle and thought that since they were here, they all had a high level similar to his, so we had to act tough against them. The leader rushed at Su Tsinyo with a sword and shouted that he would use the first position, an array, and kill the culprit. Our hero took a pistol-shaped stun gun out of his pocket and used it against the enemy, he said that when you attack, you don't need to say the name of the technique. All six other warriors shouted that the captain had been defeated, so they must surround the culprit together to prevent him from escaping. Our hero was calm, he told his opponents that he was not afraid of them, and at the same time, he would check how long the discharge and the stun gun lasted. Suddenly, a voice was heard there, saying to stop everything. A stranger came from the forest with a group of people, lighting his way with a flashlight. The master immediately bowed before the hero, greeting him, and Su Tsinyo also greeted him back. It was the instructor of the Lu Minyuan Academy. He said he apologizes for his students. Our hero said that his name is Su Tsinyo and he is the headman of the Dao in village. He thought, looking at the flashlight, that it means there are still people who came here from the future. The headman asked the instructor what kind of object he was holding in his hands, pointing to the flashlight. Master Lu Minyuan said that he knew that the item came from a circle called the Tsushi Circle. Our hero thought that he was again hearing about this man who came up with many things that had happened before in his past life. The master began to examine the stun gun in the elder's hand. The academy instructor said that he saw Su Tsinyo use a lightning attack, and he has been studying electricity for a long time, but has not been successful, so he wants to get advice from the headman. Our hero briefly explained how the weapon works when it hits an enemy and that an electric shock occurs. The headman said that the stun gun does not kill people, but simply incapacitates them for a while. The instructor thought about what he saw. This invention interested him very much. How quickly it worked against the leader of Lo O, that he did not even have time to defend himself. Su Tsinyo's skills surprised him, and he thought that maybe this person was hiding his strength, so he needed to admit the headman to Bay Min Academy. Suddenly, in the place where they stood, a noise was heard from above, from the sky. Two young people, the village chief and the instructor, raised their heads and looked at the sky. Su Tsinyo asked what it was. Clouds of mosquitoes rushed towards people. They were very large in size with long noses and red eyes. The headman shouted that these were huge mosquitoes, there were just clouds of them. These were mosquito animals. Master Lu Minyuan asked our hero to show the power of his stun gun again. The young man took and activated the device, but it is not designed to kill many mosquitoes. Whole swarms of mosquito animals began to attack people. There were so many of them that they were everywhere. Even the master of the academy was frightened by their number, to say nothing of the village headman, who said how many there are here, that they covered the sky and the sun with a black cloud. The master told the academy students to take a perimeter defense and not to panic. Everyone got their swords ready. He thought that the mosquitoes were not of a high level, but there were a lot of them. Su Tsinyo was very scared, because he had no luck fighting insects, of course, he thought that, as a hero, he needed to stay and fight, but for some reason he really wanted to just run away from here. The last thought that came to the young man's mind was more rational. He thought, why heroism, life is more important. Our hero rushed to run away, covering his ears with his hands, he ran from there as best he could. Other warriors came to the defense and killed the huge mosquitoes. Even the leader of Lo O, who was hit with a stun gun by the headman, was already in the ranks. He turned around and looked at the headman running away. The academy warrior thought that the headman was not capable of serious actions. 
Su Tsinyo quickly ran away and shouted loudly, Get away from me. It seemed to him that the mosquitoes were just going to eat him alive. Suddenly the hero turned around, but there was not a single insect around him. The guy extended his hand to the lone mosquito, which was still there, but it, catching the smell emanating from the young man, flew away. Then the boy understood and smiled with all his teeth, because he had sprayed himself with mosquito repellent. This insect repellent still worked. The young man took the product and sprayed more on his body. Suddenly the guy felt a strong wind blowing from somewhere from the rocks that were not far away. The elder proceeded there and saw that a strong wind was escaping from a crack in the rock. Then our hero decided to stand near the crack, and the smell from his body would quickly spread throughout the entire territory. Our hero did just that. He stood near a crack in the rock, with his arms spread wide, and the wind carried the smell of mosquito repellent throughout the forest clearing, to where the academy warriors were fighting. The guys were running out of strength. Master Lu Minyuan swung his sword at the insect, but suddenly the mosquito turned around and flew away from him. The instructor wondered what happened. Other students also shouted that the mosquitoes were flying away. All the warriors felt some kind of smell coming from the rock, they turned around and saw our hero there. The master told them that this was the scent of the hero Su Tsinyo. The young man thought that he just wanted to run away, but he became a hero again. His feelings were conflicting. Leader Lo O, oh, who was hit with a stun gun by the village chief, said what kind of hero it was who first tried to escape and it was just a coincidence that the mosquitoes flew away, not the credit of the village chief. Then another warrior who approached the leader said that he was simply jealous of Master Su Tsinyo and if he also wanted to become a hero, then let him catch up with the mosquitoes and kill him. The leader of the group picked up his bow and arrows and walked into the open. He told them all to watch him kill the mosquitoes. Lo O drew his bow. All the students shouted that the leader was using a sky bow with a sunset arrow. Everyone was waiting to see if the warrior could get rid of the insects. The shooter fired a fiery arrow into a mosquito cloud. He said that now the mosquitoes will fly away. Everyone shouted that the mosquitoes had flown away. Master Lu Minyuan said that leader Lo O is really strong. The shooter said that not only Su Tsinyo was a hero who was able to drive away the insects, but he too. The village headman thought that such loud statements from the group leader would not lead to any good. A moment later, the young man heard the sound of a strong noise that came from above and became louder and louder with every second. Our hero asked what that sound was. Leader Lo O was the first to see what was happening as he was standing in front. He shouted that it was the Mosquito Queen flying. The leader of the mosquitoes was enormous in size. The guy said it was all over. Our hero thought that the arrow of the group leader not only did not kill the mosquitoes, but also brought their queen here. The leader sat down on the ground near the people. The leader of the group and the others ran away. Master Lu Minyuan and his boys took up defensive positions and took out their swords and other weapons. The mosquito repellent did not work on the queen as her levels were much higher than the rest of the insects. The angry leader had such a huge sting that she could pin any human body with it. She attacked a group of people and the academy master. All the students fled for their lives. Only Su Tsinyo rushed forward, spraying the remaining liquid directly into the eyes of the Mosquito Queen. He took a great risk, as he was very close to her sting. The liquid that the elder used had an effect on the insect. It slowly flew away from the man but his strength left him. The Mosquito Queen gave the command to her brothers to fly away from this place, since it was dangerous for them here. She herself, very weakened, collapsed to the ground. All the academy members shouted that Su Tsinyo is a hero and he is amazing. There were several girls among them. Beauty surrounded our hero, they complimented him and asked the guy if he had a girlfriend. One of the academy students asked what kind of girls he liked. 
three female students at the academy received Su Tsinyo's response that he did not have a girlfriend. One of the beauties said that she couldn't even believe it. Leader Lo O, oh, seeing that the hero was surrounded by attention, became angry. The academy students set up camp in a clearing near the body of the Mosquito Queen. The headman decided to come closer to the huge insect to examine it. Inside, he found a demonic mosquito pill. Suddenly, the academy master approached Su Tsinyo, who was sitting next to the queen. He asked him why the headman was not sleeping. He replied that it was still early and went out to look for something useful. Lu Minyuan looked at the demonic pill that glowed in the night and said that things like this are good at absorbing what is needed for cultivation. Our hero put the pill in his bosom and asked the master, or he would not tell about the origin of this secret world, because the elder knew almost nothing about it. The master replied that this world is a secret realm of emptiness, where all kinds of demonic beasts live. As soon as the world opens up, people from all walks of life come here to explore, to hunt. Our hero, holding lanterns in his hands, suggested to Lu Minyuan that he had several more lanterns and could distribute them to students who were searching for treasures. The master took four flashlights from the guy and was surprised that the headman was just giving away such valuable things as a flashlight. He thanked him for the gifts. Our hero approached the tent, entered it and said that it was already late and time to rest. Suddenly he noticed a female figure inside the tent. It was one of the academy's students. She called the hero's name and said that she was scared because there were many demonic beasts here, so she couldn't sleep. Su Tsinyo decided to joke about this. He stood up, spread his arms, showing his long claws, and growled, and then cheerfully asked what she wanted to do then. The beauty rushed into the young man's arms and asked if she could stay here for the night. The guy was taken aback by this proposal. He repeated the question, stay the night? At the same time, the leader Lo O and his two boys were hiding behind a tent outside. They listened to what was happening inside. The girl inside the tent praised the hero. The guys were in cahoots with her. According to their plan, the girl should lure the hero, and then the trio should accuse the guy of harassment, and the girl will play the victim. Lo O quietly said that later for the crime, they will punish him harshly. The girl inside the tent lay down on her sleeping bag and said that today she would sleep here and would never leave. She untied the belt of her blouse. Our hero thought that he needed to calm down, because now Dunmei was not nearby, so he could relax. The young man even joked, saying that this time there is no water, so there is no need to take a bath. The girl, lying on a sleeping bag, asked if he allows her to stay. He replied that yes, because protecting those in need is his calling, how can he allow her to sleep in fear of the demon? The three guys were still behind the tent. Hearing the girl's words, leader Lo O gave the command to his two boys to start the show for now. But as soon as the trio began to move towards the entrance to the tent, unknown warriors put a sharp sword to each of their throats. Everyone received an order to remain silent, as this was robbery. The beauty in the tent sat next to Su Tsinyo. She said her name Si Rua and told the guy to give her his hand. Although the young man did not want to do this, the girl still pestered him. Si Rua put her chest forward and said that her heart was beating so hard, but he didn't want to touch it. She tried to get even closer to the guy. The young man asked the guest if it was possible. But still he remained indecisive. Suddenly, the girl herself grabbed his hand and put it to her chest, while saying, Of course you can. Immediately after a moment, she held his hand on her chest and shouted loudly that Su Tsinyo was pestering her. The guy was taken aback and asked her why she was screaming. Suddenly a lot of people poured into the tent. They all saw our hero holding his hand on the girl's chest. A rough, Unfamiliar voice said that he only wanted to rob and did not expect to see such a show. Three boys were taken hostage by three robbers dressed in warm jackets and white fur hats. The girl shouted to Brother Lo O, oh, what was wrong with him, 
who these people were. He said that they were robbers. The leader of the group stood with a robber standing behind him holding his sword to his neck. Lo O oh told the robbers that he has no treasure, but Su Tsinyo has a lot of it, so grab him. The leader told the leader that he himself knows who is richer, since he has been involved in this business for many years and let Lo O oh not joke with him better. The boss got very angry and punched the leader in the face. Lo O oh fell from a strong blow, and the gang boss put his foot on his head and said that he despises those who start such scenes, they are all losers. The girl, seeing the leader of the group on the ground, began to cry, asking the bandits to be merciful, since she had nothing but her body. The leader rudely told the beauty to fuck off, since they rob only for money, and are not perverts. He looked reproachfully at the girl lying on the ground. Two robbers approached the young man. He thought that since they had students hostage, he should wait to see what would happen next and where the master of the academy and the rest of his guys were. Our hero came out of the tent and told the bald robber, who was their leader, that the camp belongs to Baymin Academy and this school is one of the most prestigious schools in the world. Unexpectedly, Su Tsinyo saw that the academy master Lu Minyuan and other students had been taken hostage by bandits. The master shouted to the elder that he had already told the robbers who they were, but it was useless. The leader folded his hands in front of him and said that he did not recognize academies at all, since there were a lot of them, and in front of him were a bunch of losers who could not fight. All students were kneeling or lying on the ground. Lo O oh told the bandit boss that there was a great hero among them who would kill them all. The chief robber became very angry. He grabbed the group leader by the chest and shouted at him to say the name of the hero, and he would personally crush him. Lo O, oh, who had long wanted to get even with our hero for everything, was finally able to do it. He shouted, pointing to the headman, that the hero's name was Su Tsinyo and he defeated a swarm of demonic mosquitoes. All the students shouted, pointing at the young man that he was the great hero. The leader of the group told him to deal with all the robbers. The leader looked at the young man and thought that he looked like a child, he looked quite normal, but maybe the hero was pretending to then suddenly attack. Su Tsinyo shouted to the bandit boss not to trust the guys. The headman was scared and wondered why him again. Unexpectedly, Master Lu Minyuan, who was kneeling with others, said that the hero should not give in to the bandits, because he must guard justice and preserve the dignity of the world. The boss of the villains rushed with a sword straight to the young headman and told him to be a great hero, not to be shy, and they would start the performance. Our hero told the boss of the robbers that he was not given a chance to even surrender. He was unarmed and just stood there and waited to see what the bandit boss would do next. Suddenly, the leader swung his sword at the hero and said that he would not hold back. All the students who were kneeling with their hands tied, including girls, shouted for the hero to be careful. Only the leader of the group, Lo O, oh, who continued to lie on the ground, was happy about what was happening and said that the insignificant hero had finished his game. Suddenly, where our hero and the boss of the robbers stood, a sound was heard, it was Su Tsinyo who wanted to strike with a sword and came across the guy's stun gun. The young man thought that the lack of abilities was compensated by the devices and the metal blade was an excellent conductor of electricity. All the students and the master shouted that the hero is great and always wins. One of the guys said that a stun gun is like an ace in the hole. But for some reason, the robber boss still continued to just stand there, unaffected by the electricity. The leader asked the young man what this thing was that was buzzing so much. Since the handle of the sword was wooden, the electricity did not affect the robber's body, and he remained unharmed. The next moment, the evil robber struck with his sword, and our hero seems to have hit himself with a stun gun, as his hand slipped and an electric discharge hit his body. The bandit boss shouted that if this is all they can do, then it's time to end it. Master Lu Minyuan was very worried about the hero, as it was clear that he was amazed and was lying half-sitting on the ground. The leader turned around and told everyone to hand over their jewelry, since they are only robbers, they do not kill people. 
Hearing this, the leader of the group, Lo O, shouted that even if they did not kill anyone, the hero would not just leave it like that, but would destroy them later anyway. Our hero realized that the leader was planning to set the leader against him at all costs. A moment later, the boss of the bandits turned around and walked toward Su Tsinyo, he said that he would have to kill him. When the leader approached the young man, he looked at him carefully, and it seemed to him that he had already seen this face before. The guy pulled away from the villain because his mouth smelled very bad. The boss of the villains froze, he was intensely remembering where he saw the young man's face. This is the official photo of LSP, which can only belong to the senior fan of the Sushir Circle. Then a thought struck the leader of the robbers, because in front of him was LSP himself. That's what the leader thought. The main villain threw himself on his knees in front of the young man, hugged him by one leg and shouted that they had been looking for him. All the other robbers looked at their boss and did not know what to do. He shouted at them to kneel, because this is LSP. Suddenly, all the robbers knelt down in front of Su Tsinyo. They all shouted that it was their fault. The leader of the villains told the young man that they were wrong and that he should forgive them. Group leader Lo O, whose two cheeks were swollen from the blows, could not understand what was happening. He thought that now it worked out, the hero was the boss of all robbers. All the students and the master of the academy thought that the hero, it turns out, was hiding who he really was. They were still on their knees and their hands were tied. Our hero was sitting on a chair, and the boss of the robbers was kneeling next to him and trying to hug his leg all the time. The leader said his name was Mao Hutsi, but he used to call him Harry. The robber jumped up and began to take off his trousers and show his red underpants, saying that it was LSP who gave them to him as a souvenir. The young man shouted at him to stop and stop making a show here. Our hero sat on a chair, and the boss stood next to him and asked how he now evaluates his technique. Our hero thought that since he was the boss now, it was time to take out his anger on the leader of Lo O. Two robbers approached the leader of the group and showed their fists. They rubbed them and stretched their hands. Lo O, looking at the two tall enemies, prayed for the hero to have mercy on him, because he did not know what he was doing. The academy master, sitting on a chair, said that how dare Lo O frame the great hero. At these words, Lu Minyuan pointed his finger at the deceiver. Lo O's face was swollen from being punched. He said that it was a misunderstanding because, afraid of demonic beasts, the girl Si Rua mistakenly entered the tent of the hero Su Tsinyo, and he protected her. Then the academy master asked the student Si Rua whether the group leader was telling the truth. The girl said in fear that the hero really wanted to protect her, and not seduce her. Everyone realized that the accomplices of the group leader Lo O and Si Rua had been exposed. The academy master bowed before our hero and said that Su Tsinyo was acquitted, and Lo O would be punished. The teacher did not understand how his students could come up with such a plan to deceive. The great hero told the master that he had nothing to lose anyway, so let's punch Mr. Lo O in the face and forget about it. The young man took the hand of the leader of the robbers, and they quickly disappeared from this place. Mao Hutsi said to the young man, or he is pleased that they punished the leader of Lo O. But now the guy was more worried about something else. 2. Our hero and the bald boss of the robbers retreated into the cave. The young man wanted to know about LSP. The guy said that he had problems with memories from the past and asked him to tell him everything he knew. The main robber Mao Hutsi thought how the boss doesn't remember anything about himself, because he is so wise, but he can't remember who he is, or maybe he's checking something, because his identity is secret. The bandit got up and said that he was afraid that no one would overhear them, so he would go to the exit to see if there was anyone there, and then he would come back and tell everything. The leader went to the exit in the cave, and our hero remained sitting on a stone inside the cave. The young man thought about how secret this organization is, the Sushir Circle, and who this LSP is. Suddenly, 
a cry from Mao Hutsi was heard at the entrance to the cave. His voice was alarming, he shouted for the boss to come to him, as trouble had happened. When the young man came to the place where the main robber stood, he saw a strange white fog near the ground. He said that just now it was full of people, where did everyone go? Mao Hutsi saw a strange white thread that was very strong. He told his boss about it. The leader of the bandits extended his hand and pointed to the thread. Suddenly the thread, like a living web, wrapped itself around the man's hand, and someone pulled the thread strongly on the other side, so that the robber's body began to move away along the ground. Mao Hutsi shouted, Boss, help! The young man did not understand what was happening. He wanted to see where the thread dragged the robber, but a white fog covered the clearing. Suddenly he heard the screams of students coming from above. Su Tsinyo raised his head, not believing his eyes, and saw a huge web on which people were hanging in cocoons. They screamed for a hero to save them. But he didn't know how to save them, seeing this for the first time. Our hero took out a long knife and began to try to cut the poutine thread, but it was useless, the thread was strong. Apparently some demonic insect has woven this web. Two students tried to cut the thread with a saw, although they had been sawing without stopping for several hours, the thread of the web was not even damaged. The leader of the group, Lo O, was hanging in a cocoon on a web among the others. He told Su Tsinyo to join them, it would be a sumptuous meal for the spider. But the young elder was not in the mood for jokes, he looked carefully at the web and thought what to do if even a large saw did not help. Suddenly, one brilliant thought came to his mind, to use his invisibility sword, which cuts the void. This technique was taught to him by Dunmei. The young man activated his sword and used void slash. All people were freed. They began to greet the great hero. Only the leader of the group was the hall that Su Tsinyo again came out to save them all. The hero told everyone that it had become dangerous here and they all needed to quickly leave here. Academy Master Lu Minyuan also said that we had to leave. Suddenly they all heard a sound and Mao Hutsi shouted that it was too late. A huge monster appeared behind our hero, approaching him. It was a black demonic spider. All the people who saw this monster were very scared. The bandit boss shouted that it was the demonic spider queen, the most evil species that had reached the immortal realm. Everyone who stood there rushed to run away from the queen, but she had long legs and moved so quickly that she easily grabbed the first student with her paw. He screamed for the teacher to save him. The teacher turned around at the cry and saw that a huge spider had put the student in its mouth. Blood sprayed out in all directions as the monster clenched its jaws and ate the man. Teacher Lu Minyuan shouted that the demon queen had killed his student and he would not forgive her for it. The master took out his sword and rushed at the black spider. Other students shouted that they were with him. The teacher gave the command to use the Bay Min Academy sword technique. When suddenly the monster threw out a ball of threads. The threads enveloped all the people who attacked the demonic beast in one round cocoon. Our hero, running away, wanted to turn around, but Mao Hutsi pulled him away, saying that the Spider Queen does not spare anyone. The academy teacher, while in a cocoon, asked for forgiveness from his students. He said he was too stupid to bring them here. They said it was an honor to die with him. The web squeezed people more and more, it became more and more difficult for them to breathe. Suddenly our hero attacked the Black Queen, spraying the remaining mosquito repellent directly into her mouth. Now the Spider Queen, having left the cocoon with the people, chased after the young man, who deliberately distracted the monster towards himself. The guy told Mao Hutsi to help the others while he distracted the beast. The boss of the robbers began to free the students along with the master from the cocoon. All the guys decided, having freed themselves, that they needed to quickly help our hero. Su Tsinyo ran to the lake and stopped, attracting the monster's attention to himself. He shouted and waved his arms. The guy told the spider to come closer to him and eat him. 
As we approached, our hero saw the enormous size of the demonic beast, its legs were very long, its body was thick, with a green round egg in the middle. The young man ducked down, and the black spider flew into the lake with a running start. She began to sink into the water, and an electric shock shot through her body. Our hero was delighted when the body of the huge beast almost disappeared into the water. The young man said that the demonic spider queen is just a small spider in the face of technology. When suddenly the animal appeared on the surface of the water again. Although the energy discharge affected her, the spider queen was still alive. The boy didn't count on this. He shouted that the spider was too strong. The demon queen was advancing towards the young man. Su Tsinyo no longer had a plan, he was in a panic. He turned around and started running away as fast as he could. Our hero ran, and in front of him the master, students and robbers stood ready, in their hands they had baskets filled with yellow round objects. They shouted for the hero to run to them. All the people, on command, turned the baskets over and round yellow balls flew out of them and flew towards the demonic spider queen. The master and students extended their hands, with the help of which, at the command of the teacher, they all began to fill the balls with their TSI. The blue energy emanating from the palms of the people brought the balls to life, turning them into beetles. Our hero asked the academy teacher what these yellow bugs are that are so powerful. He replied that light ladybugs are the smallest of the demonic beasts, which will hold off the spider for a while. Our hero thought that this would give him time to come up with something, because he needed to find her weak point in order to deliver a fatal blow. The young man carefully examined the animal from afar. High on his head, he saw something like thin holes for capturing vibrations. This place was the least protected. Then the young man poured the remaining mosquito repellent into a wooden horn and threw it at the weak spot on the spider's head that he noticed. The horn hit the target, which means the product got inside. But not everyone understood what happened. Many students did not notice what the hero did. They did not understand why the spider, who was now lying on the ground and barely breathing, fell. Suddenly the leader of the group, Lo O, appeared there with a sword and said that no one should move and it was time for the real hero to come out to kill the animal. The braggart walked up to the green round ball that was attached on top of the queen and pierced it with his sword. Su Tsinyo shouted what the guy was going to do. But the leader did not listen to anyone, he shouted that he killed the spider queen and he Lo O is a real hero. The guy decided, since he killed the monster, he should get his most valuable silk bag as a trophy. So he pierced the green ball with his sword. Teacher Lu Minyuan shouted to Luo not to act rashly. Our hero said that the beast is temporarily unconscious and could come to life at any moment, mutating and turning into another creature. But the leader did not listen to advice. He used his sword to make a hole in the body of the demonic beast even larger in order to get the trophy. It was a bag made of spider silk that had demonic powers. But suddenly the monster's eyes glowed red and he made a loud sound. The monster stood up on its long legs, throwing off Lo O, who fell to the ground, right in front of the Spider Queen. The demonic beast was injured and very angry. Our hero shouted that the Spider Queen had mutated, so everyone should leave. There was fear on the young man's face for the life of the leader of Lo O, since he was closest to the beast. The demonic animal began to emit red waves of powerful energy. It has become many times more aggressive than it was before. The leader, sitting on the ground, shouted to the Spider Queen that it was not he who did everything, but the great hero Su Tsinyo. At the same time, he pointed his finger at our hero. Suddenly, the monster's strong paw pierced Lo O's body and lifted him up, then pinned him to the ground. The leader shouted that he hated Su Tsinyo. Our hero loudly shouted to everyone to run away. All the students and robbers rushed in all directions. But the demonic animal began to pursue our hero. 
The young man thought that the animal had realized that he was to blame and wanted to kill him. Su Tsinyo, as he ran, remembered that in biology he had been told that spiders have poor vision, so if he dispersed his attack, the animal would not be able to see it. The young man decided to use the technique of cutting the void, changing it slightly when he dispersed the space, or bifurcated it. The young man directed energy rays at the spider's body so that they hit different parts of the body. But the demonic mutated beast had protection from this technique. It was a protective red web, which was even stronger than the white web. The young man found himself in a red cocoon, from which only his head protruded, he could not move his body. The thread wrapped around him so tightly that it was impossible to break it. It was an improved version of spider silk, even stronger than the previous one, which could not be cut. The master with his students and devotee Mao Hutsi ran to the battlefield. They all shouted that they would help the hero and free him. But Su Tsinyo said that he was already on the edge and could not escape. The young man firmly decided that there was only one way out of the situation. He shouted for everyone to run away, and he, having gathered all his energy, would blow himself up when he found himself in the mouth of the demonic beast. The guy thought that dying like this, with saliva dripping from the spider's mouth, would be disgusting, but it wouldn't be in vain. The hero thought that this way he would save other young people from this terrible demonic beast. The open mouth became closer and closer to the young man. Suddenly a light beam cut the young man off from the huge black monster, and he fell to the ground in a cocoon. It was his Dunmei who did it. She came in time to save him. The young man was free from the threads of the cocoon. He shouted that Dunmei and the catch Jeotsai had returned. The girl joked that she was disappointed that he could not even defeat the spider. The cat rushed into his owner's arms and boasted that he had already entered the realm of the immortals. Suddenly the demonic animal rose to its feet. The girl stood with her back to him, but felt his movement. She raised her palm and rays of light energy rushed straight into the creature's heart. The rays made a hole in the monster's body, so that through it it became visible what was located behind the monster. Then there was an explosion of a demon from within. Everything happened so instantly that few people caught it. The body of the demonic animal lay in a pool of blood. The head robber said that although he didn't even see the impact, it was amazing. The students could not understand what had happened. Dunmei and Su Tsinyo looked at each other without taking their eyes off. The guy said she came on time. The girl was horrified how he could be so careless, because what would she do without him then? Everyone else looked at the couple with their mouths agape. The academy master said that even the goddess loves the great hero so much. The chief robber said that his boss is not an ordinary person, and neither is his fiancée. Our hero began to move away from the others. He shouted that he was leaving them, he needed to move on. He took the spider bag for himself and said that they could divide the rest of the materials among themselves. The devoted Mao Hutsi threw himself at the hero's feet. He grabbed his leg and hugged it. The leader of the robbers said that the boss was leaving him again and he was so sad to see him go. Su Tsinyo became uncomfortable, and he hurried away with the girl and the cat. They walked along a forest path and held each other's hands. She was so beautiful, her light clothes flowed. Dunmei told the guy that she found out her real name was in Lin. The girl stood on a forest path, there were white flowers in her hair, but now it seemed that flowers bloomed around her too. The beauty repeated her name and the echo repeated it too. For some reason it seemed so familiar to the young man. The girl began her story. When she and the cat walked some distance. Suddenly it became so beautiful around, flowers grew along the banks. She walked on the surface of the water in which white lotuses grew. The cat decided to jump into the water to get a hidden object in a large water flower. But this turned out to be not so easy to do. Since green plants with red teeth attacked Jeotsai. These were Rafflesias. 
the evil plants snapped their mouths to bite someone. The cat remained unharmed. He quickly jumped out of the water, managing to tuck his tail between his legs. Dunmei has created a protective aura from aggressive plants with her own hands. Under the influence of her spiritual power, the Rafflesia plants retreated. The beauty was able to go to a large flower, inside of which some red object was hidden. Suddenly the figure of a man appeared there. He called her name, in Lin and said that she was his daughter. Drops of water got into her eye, they were like fragments of her memory. She walked towards a man with a white beard and a long tail on top of his head and asked him if he was her father. The man repeated her name again and told her not to forget about her mission. The girl asked him what her mission was. But the man began to move away from her in the black starry sky. She called him Daddy. After repeating this several times, the black starry sky gave no answer. After this, the girl felt something change in her body. She said that her body became more material. The young man listened carefully to her story, which means that after she received part of the lost memories, the time for materialization of the body increased. The beauty said that she even remembered some of her previous martial arts skills, which means that her abilities are being restored. The girl, following clues from her memory fragments, found a treasure chest that was previously hidden here. Inside the chest were a long sword, a technique and a pill. In Lin gave the young man a green round pill. The guy tried it, it tasted very sour. Su Tsinyo felt sick and foamed at the mouth. He thought that maybe it was poison, but the girl calmed him down. The beauty said that this is a normal reaction to improvement. The guy realized that his level had risen again and now he was already in the realm of overflowing spiritual energy. Suddenly the young man's head began to hurt, but it was a strange feeling, as if his memory had opened up to him again. He saw such a scene. In a large room, young people are sitting at a table and drinking. They laugh, one of them, raising his glass, honors the other. All of them are from the sushi environment. There are three friends, but their faces are not clearly visible. A young man with a jade pendant shows a pistol. The others ask what it is. Our hero says that this is the first pistol he created, although the weapon was created for the first time, it is very powerful to kill immortal beasts from a distance. Friends shout that he is a genius. They consider him better than all the teachers at Bay Min Academy. One of my friends says it is the best in the entire southern region. The memories were interrupted. The young man did not know what kind of scene it was that so suddenly appeared to him from his memory. He thought that it contained a weapon that could kill demonic beasts. The girl looked at the frozen guy and asked if he was okay. He replied that everything was fine, some of his memories had just awakened. Suddenly, one after another, objects appeared that our hero had once made, a hair dryer, a toothbrush and other small things. But among everything there were flags. This thing was called a formation flag, it is first drawn and then infused with TSI energy to activate the formation. The girl said that we could try and practice how everything would work, so she suggested we come back. The young man said that they were not returning empty-handed. The young man decided to practice. His invisibility sword made several circular movements. The beauty said that after improvement, the sword can reach three meters. After some time, our hero and his cat returned to a small house on the outskirts of the village, where the young man was the headman. As soon as the guy entered the gate, he shouted that he was back. Van Lutze ran out to meet him, but she was not alone, but with a man. She told the headman that it was her father. She introduced the men. King Chen thought about the young man that he looked good, but his cultivation level was only at the level of energy overflow. He asked which academy he was from, since you have many inventions. The young man said that he does not have a teacher, he has luck. The guy handed the girl a bag and said that it contained spider silk, which he took from a dead spider, which is used for strings. 
King Chen asked the young man whether he had killed the demonic spider queen. But the father knew that the spider queen was much higher in level than the young man, which means, the man thought, the boy was lying. The young man, holding a flag in his hand, told the girl that he would try to put up a new formation flag, which he had made. Su Tsinyo placed the flag in the middle of the circle and began to charge it with energy. His sword made several circles around the flag, charging it. All this time, Van Lutzi's father watched him closely. The experienced warrior watched the strength of the flag change. He thought about how the youth was able to change the formation flag so that the seven sword formation became as powerful as the immortal realm flag. Suddenly King Chen decided that it was better to have a young man like Mr. Su Tsinyo as a friend. Therefore, he suggested that the guy go to study at Bay Min Academy. The man suggested that he would give recommendations to the guy, he would enter the same class as his daughter, because this academy is one of the best in the South. The girl's father knew that the young man's pet was a demonic beast. At that same moment, the young man remembered an excerpt from his visions that he had seen recently, it also talked about Bay Min Academy. Those three friends from the memories were probably her students. The young man thought that he had been in the village for so long that it was time to see the world, but if he left, what would happen to the village where he was appointed headman? His girlfriend from the pendant was also in favor of them going to this academy, as she believed it would help her remember everything faster. The young man told the man that he was counting on him. The young man asked Van Lutzi's father to take care of the village, since he was its headman. The man told him not to worry, in his absence there would be order here. The young man decided to put things in order and go to the academy in three days, just in time for the start of classes. Three days later, the young man Su Tsinyo stood at the large bridge leading to the city of Linvu, where the Bay Min Academy was located. The academy occupied a huge territory. Here the students studied together with their pets, who had different levels of cultivation. The young man was surprised at everything that was here. The young man turned his head in all directions and looked at everything. He told Van Lutzi's girlfriend that the academy was bigger than the university where he once studied. But the girl did not know what this word meant. Suddenly the teacher called out to the young people. He asked the young man whether he was the same student Su Tsinyo who was recommended by the elder Van Chen. The guy told teacher Che Chu that it was him. The academy teacher looked at the young man appraisingly and thought that this was another major who had entered through connections, and with the recommendations of King Chen himself, anyone would be accepted. Che Chu told the young man to follow him, even though everyone recommended would be in class A, he still had to test the boy's talent. The girl told Su Tsinyo that they would see each other later. There were five faculties at the academy, the faculty of making artifacts, the faculty of alchemy, the faculty of creating formations, the faculty of animal taming, and the faculty of studying spells. The teacher was teaching a new student and thought that he should not choose his alchemy department, since he did not want to teach a fool. Therefore, he advised the young man to choose the faculty of making artifacts. The young man said that he would follow his advice and choose this faculty. The master was happy and thought that Lin Lao would have a lot of headaches. Che Chu had a box in his hands, he opened it and handed it to the young man. The wise teacher told the young man to simply pick up an object from the box and hold it in his hands to determine his talent. There was something like a flashlight in the box. The boy took it and held it in his hand, and a red beam immediately lit up and rushed up to the sky. The teacher was surprised how this was possible, the guy had heavenly talent, as the color lit up red. Then the teacher immediately changed his opinion about the student and said that he could join him in his alchemy department, and he would provide the boy with all the best resources. Our hero said that he thanks the master for the honor, but is still thinking of enrolling in the weapon-making department. Che Chu said that he would take him to his a class then. A new student, handing the tester to the teacher, asked that the test showed that he had good talent. But the wise man decided to avoid answering. 
He said that he had just discovered that the device was broken and was showing erroneous results and that he would test it next time. The master came up with a plan, not to tell anyone about the newcomer's talents, and when the old students pecked him at this faculty, he would take him to his place. He told the guy that if anything happens, he is always waiting for him. In class A of artifact making, a young woman stood at the lectern. Master Che Chu entered the classroom with our hero and said that he had brought a new student, Su Tsinyo. The young man greeted Master Lin Lao. But the woman was very unfriendly. She told him to sit in an empty seat near the window, and she didn't care about his origin. All the students looked at the new guy with contempt. Each of the students thought that the guy entered thanks to connections and was nothing of himself. The girl sitting in front of the boy, Tan Unlei, was a genius at making artifacts. She turned back to the new guy and said what level the talent tester showed, she hoped it wasn't black. The young man thought about it, because many in the class had a silver level, but there were also students with a gold level. The guy said that the tester was broken. All the other students, having heard the young man's answer, thought that garbage had been sent to their class, which the tester could not even activate. Nobody believed the new guy, everyone thought he was deceiving. All the students turned to suit Sinyo, and even the teacher thought that they had been assigned a major without talent to their class, she was in favor of smoking him out of the class. Tan Unlei approached the new student and bombarded him with questions. She asked what level of workmanship it had and whether it would slow down their class. The young man said what he thought, he was tall. The girl suggested making a little competition between him and her. She said if the new guy loses, he'll be kicked out of class A, he's not welcome here. Everyone started shouting that he was trash. Teacher Lin Lao supported the student. She said that Tan Unlei is a real genius and if the young man can create something twice as powerful as her, then he will win. The master was very strict and added that if the new student did not do this, he would fail from their class, because they did not need panties. The student genius smiled at the teacher. Our hero sat at his desk, he had no choice but to agree. He said great, he's ready to compete. Teacher Che Chu was eavesdropping on the conversation in class all this time, since he was outside the door. He was so happy about what was happening, since everything went according to his plan, the older students pecked at the new one. All the students went to the workshop. Many boys and girls gathered there to watch the competition. In the middle of the workshop there was a table on which were hammers, saws, a tape measure, pliers and other tools. In the center near the table stood the master on either side of her, a girl and a boy. The student said let the guy choose what he wants to do. The newcomer chose a crossbow. She told him not to regret his choice later, and began to work, purple flames poured out of her hands. The students began to talk among themselves. One said that her purple flames are so beautiful, they are mesmerizing. Another student clarified that this is a diamond flame. They were all wondering what kind of fire the new guy was using. But our hero has not yet seen any flame, not even black. All the students stood in disbelief that the new guy didn't have a flame. Master Lin Lao stood and watched the new student, she knew that he was a loser, but she did not think that he was so stupid and had no talent at all. She wanted to finish him off. Our hero looked at those around him and asked what kind of flame everyone was talking about and how to do it. Everyone was amazed that he did not know how to rekindle his flame. They asked him that he was from the village. The young man proudly said that he was from a village in the mountains. The young man continued to make a crossbow as he knows how. He thought that he would master the skill of flame later. Su Tsinyo raised the crossbow he had made and said that his weapon with bolts was ready. Suddenly, Master Lin Lao snatched the crossbow from his hands, she turned into a fire hyena and shouted what kind of crap he made, because with his level, he could make a third-level weapon. The young man broke into a sweat. He had never seen such transformations in women, 
it seemed to him that death itself had come for him, Lin Lao had changed so much. The young man said that it was just a warm-up. The master said that she would give the young man one more chance, but if he didn't succeed, she would finish him off herself, and she didn't care who was behind him. The young man almost cried from these threats. At this time Tan Unlei finished her work. She smiled, raised her crossbow high and asked the young man whether he had not changed his mind about competing with her, but could immediately admit defeat. A genius in artifact making, a rank 4 magic weapon was crafted by a young girl. The beauty again advanced in her craft and surpassed her previous results in the competition. The master said that she would no longer mock the young man, and if he broke through this shield with his crossbow, then she would consider it his victory. The new student told the teacher that she shouldn't risk it and should put the shield on the table and move away. At this time, he was charging the crossbow in his hands with his spiritual energy. The girl took the shield from the teacher's hands and, placing it in front of her, said that it was made of black iron, it was an artifact of the fourth level, and that he should not brag, but shoot if he was told. The boy said that then he would shoot now. He raised his loaded crossbow and fired. The crossbow arrow pierced the shield and almost pierced the girl's body, it's good that Master Lin Lao managed to put a protection on the girl's body with her hand. The teacher screamed as he did this. The young man asked if he had one. He calmly lowered his weapon and smiled. Lin Lao wondered how a poorly made weapon could penetrate a level 4 shield. She told the new student that he had won and that Sun Tsein should take him to the freshman dorm. Student Tan Unlei looked at the young man's crossbow, which he left in the workshop, and asked the teacher whether she didn't know why this weapon, not even the first level, shot so powerfully. The teacher said, taking the broken shield in her hands, that she had not had such an interesting student for a long time. Su Tsinyo obediently went with Sun Tsein, who was supposed to take him to the dormitory. They walked for a long time past multi-tiered buildings along a wide street. The boy who was leading our hero told him not to talk, but to kneel down as Mr. Chi was coming. On a demonic animal, a gentleman with long red hair rode through the gate in the wall, his bangs covering half of his face. It was the young master of the Red Sun clan. But our hero hesitated and stood, while all the other people knelt. Sun Tsein told our hero that if he did not kneel, his legs would be broken. Our hero plunged into his memories, there was a man with a sword, his eyes were familiar to him. The young man was wondering where he had heard of the Red Sun clan, and Mr. Chi Unlun's name seemed to be familiar to him. The honorable noble looked at Su Tsinyo and thought, who is this guy that doesn't want to bow to me? No one had seen this young man before. The master gave the command to his subordinates to break both of the young man's legs. The soldiers said that they would carry out the order. Our hero closed his eyes, he tried in vain to remember where he heard this formidable name, since the memory was incomplete. But in the fragments of the guy's memory that seemed to him for a moment, this Red Sun clan destroyed his home and killed his father. The young man continued to stand as Lord Chi Unlun's warriors surrounded him. One of them said either he was already dead or waiting for them to break his legs. Another warrior said enough talk. Our hero prepared for battle, he activated his invisibility sword. Suddenly Van Lutzi's voice was heard. She said she finally found him. The girl approached Su Tsinyo, but did not understand what was happening. Suddenly, Mr. Chi Unlun gave the command to his people to return to the secret kingdom. He said that he would sort everything out later. The nobleman dismounted from his animal and, bowing slightly to Van Lutzi, said that he had not seen her for a long time, but she was becoming more and more beautiful. The girl folded her hands in front of her and said that young master Chi Unlun remained as domineering as before. The young nobleman said that Miss Van Lutzi had misunderstood, it was just a small conflict not worth attention. He thought that it was better not to quarrel with the ruler's daughter. The young master told all his people to return back to the secret kingdom. The nobleman mounted his animal and disappeared from sight, 
he wanted to quickly reach the Forbidden Lands. Our hero thought that this guy looked much stronger than him. He felt that his cultivation level was close to the Star Realm. After some time, Mr. Chi Unlun was already standing in front of the entrance to the Secret Kingdom, which was guarded by a guard with a sword. He did not let anyone through who wanted to pass without a seal. The gentleman showed the seal to the guard, and he gave him the right to enter. Finally, he shouted to his people that he no longer wanted to see that person, when he returned, whoever killed him would receive a reward. All the subordinate nobles were glad that they had received such an important task, and each of them dreamed of a reward. Each of them wanted to please their boss and kill Su Tsinyo. Among these warriors who served Lord Chi Unlun was an old acquaintance of the youth leader Lo O, oh, who was deservedly humiliated by our hero when he fought with the Spider Queen. When the couple was left alone, the Van Lutzi girl warned our hero that he should be careful with the young master, the youngest son of the head of the Red Sun clan, as he is very cocky. The young man promised that by the time the nobleman returned, he would improve his level. The young man remembered that this clan destroyed his home and killed his father. The girl told the boy that she thought he would choose her faculty of spells, but he chose another, but he could attend it if he wanted. Then the girl decided to introduce him to her best friend. A few minutes later, the young man and girl approached a tall multi-tiered building, where Van Lutzi's best friend was supposed to be waiting for them. The building was named the Pavilion of Secret Scripture. Suddenly, our hero felt the burning sensation of the pendant. He mentally asked the Inlin pendant girl what was wrong. She said that she felt that on the upper floors of this building there was what she was looking for. The young man asked Van Lutzi if she knew how to get to the upper floors of the pavilion. The girl said that this is a very important place for the academy, so it is always guarded by powerful people. The beauty continued that one can get there by fulfilling two conditions, first, the student must be under 21 years of age, and second, the student must be among the top 200 in terms of points. The guy replied that age is not a problem, but to score such a number of points and become a student from the heavenly pride list of the academy, that is, number one, is very difficult. A few minutes later they entered the pavilion. There was a girl from Class A, the artifact-making department, whose name was Tan Unlei. Van Lutzi introduced her to the master. When suddenly Su Tsinyo saw his rival in today's class competition. He shouted to her, So it's you. The Van Lutzi girl said when she saw their reaction that she almost forgot that they were now in the same class. An old friend of our hero praised him and said that he was a genius in making artifacts, and the two of them would be a good couple in this craft. But the friend didn't listen to Van Lutzi and quickly said that Su Tsinyo is no genius, he doesn't even have a flame, so at best he's just a fraud. She was convinced that she was right. The young man, calmly scratching the back of his head, asked Van Lutzi how the flame that everyone is talking about is produced and how to control it. An old friend explained to our hero that two conditions are needed for the flame to merge, the first is the approval of the fiery spirit, and the second is the ability to resist it. Fire comes in different colors, black iron, bronze, silver, gold, diamond and the highest level, divine. Tan Unlei had a diamond-colored flame, almost the highest level in the south. A guy asked his girlfriend how exactly to use a flame. She said that fire spirits are very difficult to find. The young man was angry that even if he could find the spirit, there was no fire fusion pill in the entire academy. Our hero knew that this pill must be made using fire, but at the same time, it should not be mixed with the fire attribute, so only a flame master can make it. All this knowledge was mentally transferred to the guy by Dunmei, whose real name was in Lin. Su Tsinyo scratched his chin and said after thinking that he himself could make the pill easily. Two girls at the same time, without saying a word, shouted, how easy it was. They were so surprised by his boasting. Suddenly, four guys led by leader Lo O entered the pavilion. Everyone present began to accuse our hero of being a liar. After all, 
even an experienced alchemy master could make one out of a hundred pills to be of high quality. Our hero said that he didn't want to deceive anyone, and if he had high quality ingredients, he would make a fire fusion pill. Leader Lo'o began to stretch his arms and told the new student that he would beat him on behalf of Miss Tan Unlei. Suddenly, a student genius from Class A said that she wanted to watch him make a pill and she had all the necessary ingredients, but if he wasted them, then she would let Lo'o beat him. The young man agreed to the girl's conditions. He thought how quickly the necessary materials were found. Two hours later, in Class A, Artifact Making Department, our hero brought a microwave oven. All the students looked at it in surprise, it didn't even look like a stove. Tan Unlei, seeing the rectangular stove, said that she would break it herself if nothing worked out. Only Van Lutze was worried that her friend would succeed. The classmates in the class were all talking about how none of them had yet been able to make a fire fusion pill. Even at the Faculty of Alchemy, the master managed to do this, and even then after many attempts. Our hero charged the microwave with his spiritual energy. He took the scales and measured out the required amount of ingredients in his opinion. Then a new student chemically purified some of the mixtures in the flask and obtained a purple liquid. Su Tsinyo stood in front of the microwave with some kind of flask containing purple liquid. He thought that the spiritual heat from the waves would perfectly solve the problem of fire penetration. At this time, Master Che Chu, who was in charge of the alchemy department, entered Class A. He had a vessel in his hands, closed with a stopper. The teacher was thinking about the new student. At this time there was a sound from the microwave. The timer turned off, and our hero told everyone present that the time had come to witness a miracle. On the tray lay a flask, inside of which there were a dozen gold-colored pills. Everyone screamed how this was possible. Van Lutze, Tan Unlei, and Lo'o stood closest to the young man. They saw that the pills were indeed of the highest quality and had a strong smell. The alchemy teacher shouted, What a surprise! The young man mentally asked in Lin, or these pills that he made were truly of the highest quality. The girl with the pendant replied that he was funny and didn't even know that they were really the best. Then our hero handed one pill to the two Tan Unlei and Lo O. Oh. He asked if they had anything to say. Lo O oh shouted that the color of the pill is indeed of the highest quality, but it needs to be tested. All the classmates thought, because none of them had seen diamond quality pills. The new student held one round golden colored pill in his hand and said how to prove it. Student Lo'o shouted that Su Tsinyo was cheating and began to attack the new student with his fists. Suddenly, Che Chu's teacher walked up to the arguing students and told Lo'o to shut up. The alchemy teacher said that the students were ignorant, because there were several degrees of light, a pill with such a golden color was definitely of the highest quality. Then all the students said that since the alchemy teacher himself confirmed that the pill was of the highest quality, then it was so. Everyone shouted that this was incredible. Our hero, after the teacher's words, realized that he had won the bet. He asked what Lo'o would say to this. But he still didn't want to put up with it and said that they had passed. The guy holds a grudge against Su Tsinyo. Our hero handed the flask with pills to Tan Unlei and said that he wanted them to share the pills, because she was the one who gave the ingredients. But the girl turned around and wanted to leave. She snorted and told him to keep them and for her to learn how to make them herself. The genius student remembered that the guy used a stove. Van Lutze shouted to her friend not to leave, because together with Su Tsinyo they could make new artifacts and move to the highest level. But my friend said that she would not study with him. When the Tan Unlei girl left, Master Che Chu smiled and told our hero that he wanted to talk to him alone. The master and the new student went out into the street. The teacher told the young man to transfer to his alchemy department, he knows that the guy needs to think, and if he agrees, he will give him a gold-level flame. Our hero thought. He remembered that the genius of Tan Unlei had a diamond flame, 
and a gold flame was a lower level, then why did he need such garbage? Suddenly, the figure of Master Lin Lao appeared behind the Che Chu teacher, who, approaching them, said that she did not think that the old man would try to lure her student away. The alchemy teacher felt uncomfortable, he turned away and said that students were free to choose their own faculties, and he had a gold-level flame. Then a new student told the teachers that gold-level fiery spirit was trash and maybe they knew where to get better ones. Master Lin Lao thought that the young man was a little pushy, so he should be tested. She said that she knew where the fiery spirit of the diamond level and even possibly the heavenly level was. The teacher said that in the Valley of Broken Souls, a hundred miles east of the city, a mysterious spirit lives. But to obtain it, he must sacrifice his spiritual strength. Lin Lao talked for a long time about the spirit of fire, and then asked him, putting her hand on his shoulder, or the guy understood everything. And I thought that there would be someone there who would kick the young man's ass. The young man, having received all the instructions, went on a hike. He mentally told in Lin that they would have to conquer the spirit of fire. A few hours later he was walking east of the city, among forests and rivers. It was a valley of broken souls. The young man was walking along a narrow forest path among hundred-year-old trees when he noticed surveillance. The girl from the Inlin pendant told him, fluttering like a fairy around him, that Lo O and the boys were following him everywhere. The young man said that he knew about this. Su Tsinyo approached a tree with red leaves, he thought that his pursuer was also somewhere nearby. Suddenly the Lo O guy appeared behind him. He shouted that Su Tsinyo didn't expect to see him here and there were only two of them this time. Our hero told the group leader that he had a short memory and forgot everything that happened in the secret kingdom. This time the Lo O guy prepared for a fight. He said that he took with him the most valuable treasure of his family of the immortal realm, the Golden Wheel, to deal with it. Su Tsinyo mentally asked in Lin, or is this weapon really powerful? The girl from the pendant replied that it was just silver-level trash. Lo O launched his attack by jumping high and activating his magic wheel. He shouted, Die! Our hero decided, in response, to try the in Lin technique from the secret realm. This is a technique of a ghostly step, when his body seemed to be in three places at once, his movements were so fast. Leader Lo O tried to control his weapon, but the further the golden wheel was from him, the more difficult it was for him to control it. Suddenly, the fleeing Su Tsinyo stopped, the enemy thought that he had run out of spiritual power. Lo O prepared for the final finishing attack. He shouted for Su Tsinyo to go to hell. But our hero activated his sword and cut the golden wheel in half. The young man Lo O shouted to the enemy why he was running away from him if he had such a powerful sword. Our hero said that he wanted to lure him inside the area where the formation was activated. The enemy stood in a whirlwind of blue energy. A column of spiritual energy rose up from the low O guy, taking away his spiritual power from him. Then the guy realized that Su Tsinyo had deliberately lured him to this place. The red portal began to open. Lo O was left unconscious on the ground. Our hero said that the first stage is over. In Lin smiled as her friend allowed the stalker to become a victim in order to open a portal. Su Tsinyo approached the portal and finally told the guy Lo O that he had come to his senses a little, so that he would no longer pester him. Having overcome the portal, our hero found himself in the desert, no matter where you looked, there were sands and scorching sun. The young man became very hot. He did not know where to go, where the lake of fire was. In her mind, the girl from the In Lin pendant said that she thought of a lake just in front of him. Suddenly the guy turned around and shouted that no, there was a fiery beast behind him. A moment later, a huge fiery beast was running towards our hero. His body was on fire. The monster's mouth was wide open, and flames were pouring out from under its feet. It's good that the young man managed to put up protection, otherwise the monster would have incinerated him. 
In Lin told him to quickly run away as it is a red fire beast that is very vicious and cruel. Our hero hid behind the stones that stood nearby. Guy noticed that the beast had no eyes. He wondered how he determines where the victim is, maybe they feel heat from the body. The beast began to approach the stones behind which the young man was hiding. The guy decided to use the ice sword talisman. Our hero created an ice plate, and he himself, jumping over it, ran away from the fiery beast, which attacked the plate, since its temperature was lower. In Lin said that the closer to the lake, the more fire beasts there are. She could not allow him to take such a risk, and offered to materialize herself. The young man remembered how the girl from the pendant last time acquired a body and almost died. He didn't want this again. The young man told the girl that he could not risk her. He firmly decided that he could deceive the fire beasts himself. Our hero firmly told his friend not to worry, he has a solution. On the shore of the lake of fire there were many animals that guarded it. A young man, hiding behind a large stone, created a whole brood of yellow ducks. The girl from the pendant, fluttering above him, asked what he was planning to cook. The guy took one of the ducks and said that he wanted to put an ice talisman on each of them. Then the girl understood the young man's plan. She said it was a good idea to distract the fire monsters. All the ducks were charged with cold. The guy started making noise so that they would run away and shouted that now everything depended on them. A few moments later, all the fire animals chased the ducks. The guy happily said that the fiery animals liked his toys. While the animals were busy with the birds, our hero himself flew to the lake of fire over the stones and sands. He landed on a flat rock that overlooked the lake with a girl floating next to him. This lake was made of fiery lava. In the middle of it was a fiery lotus flower. Our hero, seeing all this, was very puzzled, he stood on the edge of the lake, and the temperature no longer allowed him to breathe, how to reach the middle of the lake. In Lin also became sad. She said that the teacher knew it was a difficult task, so she did not come here herself. The young man did not lose heart, he said that since they were here, they should try. The guy, using the talisman, lowered his temperature as best he could. The girl was worried that this was not enough to reach the middle of the lake. The young man had another device, something similar to a pinwheel with blades above his head, which would help him fly faster. The young man flew, the blades spinning at maximum speed, but this movement was not enough to cover such a distance. The guy felt intense heat. His clothes underneath seemed to be starting to catch fire. He had to land on the shore. The girl flew up to him and asked if he was okay. Our hero sadly said that plan A failed. The girl, pointing to the lake, told him to look there. The young man looked and saw on the surface of the lake wide leaves of water lilies, which were huge and were arranged so that they could reach a large lotus flower. A diamond-level flame spirit was flying above the flower. It was a fireball with a fiery tail. The guy asked the girl that this was a diamond level. She replied that yes, it is a diamond, since it is invisible and shapeless. Then the young man thought that he could take the form of his master's will. Since the road was made of leaves of huge water lilies, our hero, using an ice talisman, ran along the leaves. The girl from the pendant was very worried about him, she told him to wait, because this is a hellish fiery lotus, but he no longer listened to her. The young man ran, but on one wide plant his foot slipped down, he was overcome by heat. The young man sat down on one knee on a water lily leaf, the temperature around was unbearable. He came up with a risky idea, bit his thumb, and smeared blood on his chest. In Lin shouted at him that he was crazy. By this, our hero showed that he uses his body as a talisman. The girl screamed at him not to do this because he would die this way. The young man said that he had no other choice. The guy said that he activated his ice form. His right hand was completely frozen, he just couldn't feel it. Our hero began to slowly move towards the flower, 
his legs did not obey him, his hand simply could not be felt because of the cold in it. The young man was in front of the lotus flower, but did not even have the strength to rise to reach out to the flower and take the diamond spirit. The young man lay unable to open his eyes. Finally he opened them and saw that he was in the middle of a green forest and next to him was his in Lin. The guy stood up and asked if he was still alive. The girl said that he passed the test and received a fiery spirit. He was delighted and jumped up. He said he finally got it. Su Tsinyo stretched out his hand and looked at the palm. A fireball appeared in the air above the palm. But he felt the heat and shouted that it was very hot. He couldn't concentrate. The young man asked the beauty why the fire burns him. The girl said, because the last stage of the sacrifice remained, only by offering what is closest to the heart, he will be able to control it. The young man looked at In Lin and said that the girl from the pendant was the girl closest to his heart. After thinking for a while, the young man decided to joke that, in order to get such a powerful spirit of flame, he would sacrifice everything. Suddenly the guy's words hung in the air, it's just that. The young man remembered that there was an agreement between them. Suddenly the girl changed her appearance, she became transparent. He shouted what was happening, he didn't choose her. The girl from the pendant looked at him, her image disappearing before his eyes. She said quietly that that's why she chose him. A diamond-level fire appeared on his outstretched hand, but it no longer burned him. He still saw her next to the fire. The girl asked if it doesn't hurt now. Then the guy realized that this could be in one case, when in Lin is the spirit of the flame. Having disappeared as a donation, she appeared in the guise of a fire spirit. The young man remembered everything that happened in the desert and thought that it was all like a hallucination or a dream. After all, now a young man can incinerate the most terrible fiery beast, simply with his fire emanating from the palm of his hand. Our hero was glad that he had acquired such a powerful gift, thanks, of course, to his girlfriend from the pendant. After some time, the young man returned to the academy. This happened late in the evening, when the big moon rose over the city. The guy thought that he should take a shower and go to bed. He was walking past the pavilion building when he saw someone jumping on the roof. The young man thought that it was someone practicing or maybe it was a thief. While the black figure was on the roof of the school. Then a man dressed all in black jumped onto the building where the scriptures were kept. The new student decided to see what would happen next. The guy made his way to the gate, wearing a black mask, he looked at the entrance, the two guards did not notice anything. Our hero, hiding behind the wall, threw a pebble to attract their attention. The guards noticed the thief. The guards shouted for everyone to catch the thief. But the black figure, jumping down, began to run away. The new student decided to take advantage of the moment and entered through the open door. But the protective field worked at the door, and our hero could not move. The guard said there was another thief on the first floor. They rushed to the guy shouting for him to surrender. Unexpectedly for them, our hero overcame the security spell and attacked them with his fire. The guards fell, and our hero, having jumped over them, was already running up the steps. In Lin mentally told the guy that he needed to get out of here. Su Tsinyo, assessing the situation, thought that the road through the gate was closed to him, he had to make his way deeper. A guard with a sword was chasing him from behind. The new student used a ghost step and flew over the guard, doing a somersault in the air, just as a sword whizzed past below him. The guy landed and just thought that he had an improvement in technique. I heard something rustling behind me. These were arrows that flew just near his head and pierced the wall nearby. Three archers were shooting at the thief, they were standing near the gate at the entrance. The young man had no choice but to go upstairs, it was the only way out. The young man ran up the stairs, using a kick to the guard's head, he rose to the floor above. M had to destroy the ladder to gain some time. The guy had to be careful, 
because it was likely that the thief was still here. The ancient library had many shelves with books, among which a thief could hide. Suddenly, a black figure of a thief appeared behind our hero. He attacked Su Tsinyo, but the young man was ready for battle. The enemy's sword hit the frying pan that our hero had prudently placed. Then the boy decided to attack himself using his crossbow, which he improved a little. The arrow hit the sword directly and tore it in half. The enemy was surprised what a powerful weapon it was. The young man said that he remade it, making it explosive. The thief, having climbed onto the shelves with books, began to jump on them. The enemy was moving very quickly. On the side of his clothes, Su Tsinyo noticed a round talisman. It was a sign, on a white background, a black skull was depicted. Our hero has run out of crossbow bolts. Then the thief, seeing this, turned around and attacked Su Tsinyo. But the young man was not at a loss. He said that he had something else in store. And he pointed a flashlight at the thief. A beam of light blinded the thief. But the flashlight was also a stun gun. The thief was electrocuted and fell. Our hero said that first we need to see who this thief is. He crouched over the thief and wanted to remove the blindfold. He just wanted to say who he saw, when everything darkened in his eyes. A black figure, similar to the image of a woman, is the last thing our hero saw before losing consciousness. A few moments later he woke up, but was without outer clothing, without a mask, among scattered books in the library. In Lin barely woke him up. She said that the thief wants to set him up and they need to hurry to get out of here. Students ran into the library. Someone recognized Su Tsinyo and said that isn't this the student who won the artifact-making competition. Our hero had a can, which he shook and opened so that it would spray a smoke screen so he could escape. Acrid smoke filled the entire room. The young man ran to the exit. He was almost at the exit. When I suddenly felt that something was wrong with the girl from the pendant. She said that she couldn't help it and the memories were entering her mind. The girl remembered that she had once been a student at this academy. She came to the library and entered a secret room. The girl headed towards the wall and began to remember further where exactly the door to the secret room was. The young man said that there was a wall here, but the girl did not listen to him. Then In Lin told the young man that he should hit the wall at this place. The voices of the students who were looking for the thief were getting closer. Suddenly, having done as the girl said, our hero found himself in the dark, the light disappeared. He found himself in a small room. There the beauty said that she had seen this thing somewhere, pointing to a small voice recorder that lay on a stand in the form of waves. The guy picked up the voice recorder and said that this thing is called a voice recorder that saves sounds and speech. He turned it on. A girl's voice sounded from the device, she said that she was in Lin, then she talked about important things. The recorder played, locusts, ghosts, dinosaurs, sleepiness, penicillin, historical grievances. The girl said that it was indeed her voice, but she did not know the meaning of the words. The young man thought that only he would understand the words, dinosaurs and penicillin, but what did they mean? The sounds of guards and students could be heard behind the wall, they were given the command to search every corner. The young man whispered that they must get out of here, there must be a mechanism here. The beauty said that by moving the stone lion, a secret passage would appear. The room was not safe. The young man decided to take something from here as a souvenir, two books. Then he, moving the lion, opened a secret passage through which he got out. The next day, when the sun rose above the multi-tiered pavilion, many students noticed a photo of the criminal thief, Su Tsinyo, on the bulletin board. The most upset was Van Lutzi, who exclaimed that this could not happen. Tan Unlay, who was standing next to her friend, said that she guessed that the new guy was not a good guy. The king's daughter said there was some kind of misunderstanding. She was sad that no one believed that her friend was a good person. 
The old teacher, Master Che Chu, looked at the advertisement and said that it means the guards saw his face. One guy said that Master Lin Lao herself applied for his capture. The alchemy teacher said it was good that the guy was not in his class, otherwise he would have been unlucky. All morning and night our hero ran away from the guards pursuing him, now he was in a dense forest. He was very tired, because he had not eaten anything for almost two days and had used up a lot of energy. There was still an area of the academy in the forest, where there were many places sealed with spells. Even behind the trees the pursuers could see the man running away. Our hero made a smoke screen. At first people thought it was fog, but then they realized it was smoke. It was hard for the guards to breathe, they couldn't see anything. They started coughing and choking. People said that they should turn back and stop searching. The commander gave the command to retreat. Suddenly Master Lin Lao appeared there. She was surrounded by a purple aura and had a small fan in her hand. She screamed at the guards about how stupid they were that they couldn't even handle the boy. The teacher shouted that the smoke was coming in the wind, so we had to look for it in the wind too. She showed them her fan and said that she would clear the way for the guards. The young man thought that the smoke would not only cover him, but also force them to retreat. While he was sitting in the cave. Then he wanted to go down the cliff in a helicopter. The guy opened the book taken from the secret room and began to read. After a while he heard that the guards were close. Suddenly shots were heard from a crossbow, and the guards fell dead near the entrance to the cave. It was Master Lin Lao who killed them with the youth's weapon. The teacher said that now he is not only a thief, but also a murderer. The guy said she was an accomplice of the real thief. She said he wasn't stupid, but he wouldn't have a chance to talk about it. Master Lin Lao began to wave her fan violently, so that a whirlwind formed there, which lifted the young man's body upward, as he did not resist the wind, he could not control anything. In Lin told the young man to use the dragon technique. The guy remembered two lines that he had read and understood how to act with both hands while spewing out the dragon's breath. Su Tsinyo released a strong barrage of fire. The master, defending herself with a sphere of protective aura, said that he had indeed acquired the spirit of flame. The guy said he should thank her for that. In the place where Master Lin Lao stood, there was a black mark from her body. Several dead guards lay at the entrance to the cave. Suddenly there was a cry from other guards who had just arrived. All the people started shouting that Su Tsinyo killed the lady and the guards. The young man had no choice but to hide. After some time, the entire academy already knew that Su Tsinyo had stolen treasures from the academy, killed his teacher and was now on the run. A reward has been announced for whoever catches the criminal. The Van Lutzi girl was most upset after it became known that her friend had killed his teacher. 30,000 for the capture of a criminal, that was a huge amount of money. A man in a long robe came to the hotel where room number 8 was booked. When our hero entered the room, he saw Van Lutzi, who was sitting at the table. Van Lutzi said that as soon as she found out about everything that happened, she immediately wrote to him. The young man said that he was also worried about her. Suddenly something flew at the young man. A cry was heard, die. It was a cat, the hero's favorite. He jumped on top of the owner and wanted to claw his eyes out because he abandoned him at the academy. The cat talked about his problems of life without a young man and then asked whether his owner had killed someone. Van Lutzi also wanted to know what was going on. The guy put a white sheet on the table with an emblem drawn on it, a black skull. He asked the girl if she had seen this sign before. The beauty looked carefully at the emblem and said that she heard about this organization from her father. This is the symbol of a famous intelligence organization called Ghost. She was engaged in the fact that for a large fee, she could infiltrate any sect or organization in order to collect information. Our hero said that if Master Lin Lao was a member of the organization, she should have had this sign, 
but when he examined the place where she died, there was nothing there, which means it wasn't her. The young man, deep in thought, told Van Lutze that Miss Lin Lao did not die back then, due to the barrage of my fire, I could not see her actions. The beauty said that she did not expect it, because it turns out that the master of the academy was an undercover agent of this organization. The girl didn't know what to believe now, all her thoughts were confused in her head. The guy rushed to her and took her hand, he said that he needed to find the ghost to clear his name. He asked the king's daughter for help. But she said her father forbade her to interfere. The young man nevertheless said that he was grateful that the girl was helping him. He said, or did she hear the words, locusts, dinosaur, sleepiness, penicillin and historical grievances. The girl said that she knew the word locust, these are insects that destroy all crops. Our hero said that words can be code words with a secret meaning. Then the girl thought about it and remembered something and wanted to say. Suddenly the door to the hotel room was knocked down. It was the tan unlay girl who kicked and knocked down the door. She shouted that the young man should not dare to harm her friend Van Lutze. The youth said he would never harm Van Lutze. The student genius wanted to attack the young man, but the king's daughter told her that she herself had summoned Su Tsinyo. Tan Unlay grabbed her friend's hands and said that they had announced a reward of 30,000 for the capture of the criminal and everyone was hunting for him. The young man heard the girl from the pendant that danger was approaching. The young man saw three strangers following him. The devoted cat told the owner to allow him to meet the guests. The girls continued to quarrel, Van Lutze said that she herself wanted to help suit Sinyo, but her friend said that he was dangerous. Then the young man, folding his hands in front of himself, said that he was not asking anyone to die for him and decided to surrender himself. The two girls froze in amazement, they shouted together, What? Soldiers were already surrounding the hotel, three stood at the entrance. The young man was very happy and told the girls that since such a big reward had been announced, not only would it not kill me, but it would help me, the main thing was to use it correctly. Our hero left the room and went to the common room of the hotel. He stood on the second floor and announced loudly, Ladies and gentlemen, are you looking for me Mr. Su Tsinyo? If you have watched up to this point, then I am very grateful to you, because this is where the video ends, if it's not difficult for you, then like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to continue this story, then write in the comments. Thank you all, I love you all.